Koopa Moogles, Schwanz27 here, and what you're about to see is an upload of a Twitch stream in which we had one race that overlapped its time with another one, so the Restream crew decided to try having both races playing at the same time for a portion of the video, with race one starting beforehand, then the two of them simultaneously, then race two ending afterward. This is a more experimental broadcast to see if this sort of thing would be enjoyable for our viewers to try and maximize the amount of races that were streamed, but it also may be a bit confusing confusing to have two different races on the screen at the same time so give us some feedback down below in the comments section whether you like this or if it was kind of hard to follow since the races overlapped with one another it's pretty difficult to separate the two in post-production so we decided to keep them together for the video upload the interview portion of the second race is actually in the beginning of a different video on the channel link in the description if you like to hear that part of the uh, broadcast now let's get started with the poltergeist fury flag set for both of our races here good evening moogles it is the schwanz 27 here and we got some warring triads action for you tonight a double header both with the poltergeist fury flag set as you see on the screen here Firstly, we've got uh, Fly Eagles Fly 72 versus Cheddar Goblin in the commentary booth with me is Joker Mage. Joker Mage, how are you living tonight? I, I'm a little confused. Didn't we do this yesterday? I could have sworn I was commentating with you yesterday on the Poltergeist Theory of, uh, of Fury Flag set. What, am I just having deja vu? Uh, you may have bumped your head a few times, but that's fine, because our runners will bump our heads many times at the statue bosses here uh, with Poltergeist flag set. Uh, and I also am joined in the booth uh, with Knuckly Kong, who is uh, doing our tracking for this evening. What's going on, Knuckly? Uh, not too much. Just excited for another Poltergeist Fury seed. Yeah, so uh, Poltergeist Fury as we do see uh, here, is based on three character start, seven characters, nine espers to unlock Kefka. We are having a skip tonight at, it looks like, ten characters, eleven espers, and some other number of checks. So we'll have to see what that is as we go along here, or if one of you fine gentlemen want to download the seed and tell me what's what, then, uh, we, then we could certainly do that. Um, but interesting other things about uh, about this here is that we are going to be getting auto haste and auto safe after four dragons, a dragoon set after a uh, Colosseum win, and uh, we are going to have access to Y NPC remove, which allows us to sequence break certain checks, as well as a 11 to 20 curse shield battle because we're going to get the curse shield right off the start with Y NPC set to remove. Uh, we get some nice relic item rewards for dead checks. We are able to use shock in Poltergeist Fury flag set, and we won't be learning any fire spells in this seed. So uh, what do you think we're going to see here, Joker Mage, off of the start? Well, well we are going to be learning fire spells. It's the ice and lightning that's gone away. Oh, the, yes, you are absolutely correct. That and is stop as well, because, you know, we can't have them stop the spicy chicken in. Uh, speaking of spiciness, I think uh, all of our sprites are also going to be uh, have a thin layer of sriracha on them. Mm. Uh, everything's going to be, you know, the pollo picante uh, flavor tonight. Very delicious. That should be really nice. So we are doing uh, Team Ultima, represented by Fly Eagles Fly. They have one victory in uh, their three matches versus Cheddar Goblin, representing Team Flare Star. Uh, who is hoping to get his squad on the board tonight here uh, in the on the left hand side um, so it should be a really exciting fun race we'll see which one of our three characters we get to start off we do have access to Ultima in the seed as well so we'll see if we make uh, any of those uh, come by what else should we be seeing tonight here Joker Mage well, if it's anything like the seed we watched uh, yesterday for Poltergeist Fury on uh, SG2, uh, there's going to be a ton of divergence. And I, that's why I like to see it, because it's always fun when there's like multiple ways to get to the end. And you got to kind of see like how people will, like what their priorities are and uh, what kind of checks they like doing and then how they uh, follow through on what like rewards they get off of that. Uh, the 
main thing to watch out for are those dead checks. Sure, you're going to get some relics, but uh, your boss scaling goes off of your checks, while you, the experience you get from them only goes off of the uh, checks that pay out. So your dragons, espers, and character count. Uh, so those dead checks, sure, you may get uh, some wonderful pair of Marvel shoes from them, uh, but I, your is is going to make the next boss that much harder for you. Yep. So I, I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I thought you were being silent because you were mad at me for mentioning Marvel shoes. <laughs> no, uh, Marvel shoes is the best uh, fifteen thousand you will ever get from a dead check. Um, We'll see exactly which one of our uh, characters uh, we get to start out here. Uh, it looks like we have definitely 10 characters and 11 or 11 espers for Skip. Without knowing what the check count is, I'm, I'm hmm. keeping my eye on that 11 espers potentially for Skip because it's only two more than the final Kafka requirements there. Yeah, you can the check just... Skip is 23. Okay, great. Okay, thank, thank you, you. Nuckley. Yeah, that, that um, you know, getting three extra characters it, it can be pretty difficult, but two extra espers you could probably just end up finding while you're looking for those extra characters. So it's entirely possible that we'll see a lot of... Uh, I, I think the 11 esper skip is um, definitely on the table, but, the, you know, someone may just get go mode and want to go uh, tower, and it looks like, speaking of go, we are go. Yeah, so our dragons get plus six levels, and our bosses get plus three levels. So even though they're based on checks, we have... Is that throw and blitz right off the start yeah, with Go-Go? Yeah, uh, blitz sets her uh, throw mog and uh, Go-Go for good luck, I guess. Well, it's officially a bum rush throw-go seed. Wow, lots of awesome options already on the table for our runners. Cheddar Goblin wasting no time heading over to the colon gin uh world of balance here for this check Ooh, a ribbon in a pot why is that nice joker mage that's nice because we can just why remove that door that and get in and grab ourselves a curse shield and hopefully it will be a nice number on that curse shield yeah so this seed we can get up to uh up to 20 battles and as low as 11 and that was lock i believe right off yeah the that bat. already paid off like, the, the Cheddar's already got found a, a number four there. But I also think uh, Fly Eagles Fly is going to possibly do some of Mog's checks here uh, while looting out the place. Fairly standard. Yep, there's the Lone Wolf start it. Okay, I mean... We don't need that lock to get the curse shield, but we have them now. So, uh, what are we going to do with him now? Yeah, I think what we're going to do with him is we're going to make sure that we can go into the Phoenix Cave when we have enough characters to actually take out the dragon. That's what I would do. You're not going to pull a Drinks Glue Classic and just do uh, Phoenix Cave right away? I mean, you could do Phoenix Cave right away, but remember, four dragons in this flag set equates to um, auto-haste and auto-safe, right? right? So I'm going to want to get those big positive auto-statuses for my characters right away. And there you go. Man of the people, Fly Eagles Fly, selling those Marvel shoes right away. That's what we like to see. And it seems like after grabbing Locke, uh, Cheddar has just come back and is sort of uh, following in Fly Eagle's uh, footsteps here, you know, doing these Narsh checks to get triggering the uh, Lone Wolf, uh, or initiating it, I should say. Yeah, if you're going into the world of balanced Narsh anyway, you might as well trigger that check, and there is that Narsh Shed that will allow you to get six treasure chests all there, and there's a bunch of fire skeins being bought we do have throw from Mog, so that's a really nice thing to start off with here. There is an economizer for sale for about 58k in the Narsha Relic Shop. So that'll be nice if one of our runners decide to go see what the Curse Shield count is and potentially earn themselves that Ultima. Ultima is available in this seed, however, it is at the cost of 254 MP and oh no! It's a travesty, a 20 battle Curse Shield! That might be a little oh, bit too much yeah. for me there. 
like even at the beginning of the game, like you're it, it, a good runner is going to be able to like get through a lot of this with before that even gets uncursed. Yeah, I don't even know if we'll do twenty battles in the entire uh, <laughs> in the entire. I mean, game. you can intentionally do that, but if you want to like go say fight the Kefka and Narsh fight, then the Mughal defense fight, and take on all the ads, but I don't think that's worth it. That's a huge time sink if you tried to do it that way. Yeah, I mean, levels are the best way to uh, get past the ridiculous uh, scaling that we are going to have to go up against here. So let's see what Lone Wolf has to offer. An offering? Yeah, we don't need an offering right now because we don't have fixed dice or Valiant Knife or Atma or uh, Snipers, so... No we do have someone who can equip the fixed dice if we find it, though. Oh, Magicite Raiden. All right, that's a good... I think that's our first uh, Esper on the table. Yep, first shiny stone there for Fly Eagles Fly, and that is an Imp Sprite at Kafka at Narsh. He's going to walk right past it. Uh, I don't disagree there. We at least know what it's going to be. Uh, however, we don't have a full party of characters to go take the uh, Kafka at Narsh uh, check right there. So. Yeah, I think if it was a character... Uh, there might be some characters where I'd probably want to do it now, but even then, you're, you'd have to split off one character. You'd have two characters going into it. It's not a fun fight that way. Maybe you get... Two, even, but it's not character, it's not worth it um, until you've got like your party base down. All right, Cheddar Goblin heading into the Returner's hideout. I believe he did go take a peek at the monster in a box. I did not see exactly what it was, though. And Fly Eagles Fly is also going to loot out the Returner's base. Yeah, so there are nine treasure chests here and an item shop. So definitely a good uh, good place to go. One of the most treasure dents uh, in the world of balance. Now, how soon, like, when would you expect uh, Fly Eagles to go ahead and check that um, cafe shop uh, for its lock? Like, is that something you expect him to do soon or he might put it off for a bit? Yeah, it depends on what his comfortability is with free checks. Obviously, he went to go do Lone Wolf, so he's probably pretty comfortable getting at least one or two free checks under his belt, so we'll see when he decides to go over to Colonjin in order to get Locke. Remember, we don't actually need Locke to get access to the Norse Weapon Shop and the Cursed Shield with YMPC set to remove. We can sequence break those things. Uh, tech... A lot of the times you do kind of want to stay in logic at least for a little bit because then you at least know where on the chain your characters can be versus they cannot be, right? Um, that's one of the interesting things about Worlds Collide is every seed is 100 percentable. Um, so you've got to get a character to unlock more characters. Cursed Ring pick up there from Cheddar Goblin. Very nice. That's one of the things I love to buy whenever I see it. It's 820 GP in this seed, and it will allow you to learn the X-Zone spell after uh, having the Condemn status for whatever battles you put it on. You're not guaranteed to learn any uh, spells that have instant death, so that's a nice one. As well as that Ice Rod pick up there. Uh, we're not going to learn Ice out of any espers or with any magic in this seed so that's another really good one and he's going to sell a bunch of stuff here uh in order to go and pick up yet another ice rod so yeah that's, that's great play per, yeah like if that's really is apart from possibly getting the uh esper shiva that's really going to be all your the limit of what kind of like ice elemental damage you're going to have uh there might be a few other edge cases like the blizzard sword but for the most part, though cracking some ice rods or summoning Shiva is going to be where it's at. Uh, same thing with uh, lightning. You're going to want to find some thunder rods and possibly the Esper Robin. Yeah, the other great thing about rods with this starting set of characters, I noticed somebody was asking about it in chat. Gogo can mimic any item, whether it's in your inventory or not. So he could mimic those ice rods over and over again and that's a great way to get past one of these first couple of bosses here 
Um, as far as advantage with the starting characters, I think it's up to whichever runner is more comfortable getting those free checks, like the Zone Eater, like the, uh, uh, the, the Lone Wolf, the Figaro Weapon Shop, and uh, Setzer's Colon Janin, right? So if you can get all four of those checks for free and get stuff out of it, yeah, your enemies are going to be scaled pretty high. However, we've got Throw, we've got Go-Go, we've got Blitz on the table. So these enemies are just going to fall over there. Just like and we already, uh, Cheddar Goblin we already know, sh showed. Mm, sorry about that. We already know that two of those freebies do pay off. The Lone Wolf 1 is an Esper, and the Cafe Shop is locked. So those are actually like useful free checks. Yeah, and with YNPC set to remove, we also get the option of a free check at Mount Zozo, where we can go without having access to Cyan. So there's potentially five free checks you can do pretty easily in this seed. Um, so it just are depends you... on how comfortable the runners are with scaling up that way. Can you clarify something regarding the, the Y remove? Would you be able to do the Figaro engine room with that? Because I know that's normally blocked off by Siegfried, but I don't know if the rest of the sequence will trigger if you have, don't have the uh, Edgar in your party. So you can trigger that whole World of Ruin sequence without Edgar. You basically Y remove the Siegfried that's blocking your path, and then that gives you access to the ancient castle, as well as giving you access to, uh, rather, the South Figaro uh, engine room. And it also gives you access to ancient castles. So you could do that whole loop without Edgar. The only thing you can't do is check the Figaro throne. It will be empty. And uh, I'm asking, because there is yet another dragon down there that you could potentially go for. Yeah, so with YMPC Remove, you have access to every single dragon in the game. Uh, you can go into Phoenix Cave and fight the dragon without lock. You can walk up to the Nanix Tower and fight that dragon without Strago. You just can't get the rewards at either one of those places. Uh, Cheddar Goblin did take off the Moogle Charm and is grinding, but Fly Eagles Fly finding an experience egg in the basement of South Figaro here before his grind fights, that's going to be a huge advantage to him. Did Cheddar uh, also explore this area? Because mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't remember if I saw him go into the basement area. He did but not. Uh, he would have certainly gotten that if he did. Yeah, he did not. I think all of his characters are the exact same level looking at their HP totals here. Yeah, an experience egg is just a wonderful thing to find early. Now, with all the dragons being available with Y Remove, they make for great early game experience. But before taking on a dragon, I would want to grind a few levels and then also get some espers that have good stat boosts. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, espers will give a 82% or something silly percent chance of having a stat bonus associated with them so if you start off at level three you're going to get much more on the stat boosts than if you have taken a couple of grind fights let's say and have gotten your levels up a little bit yeah i get if you we i don't think we've seen what's actually on the one esper we found so far because i don't know if the uh fly eagle fly has actually looked at it yet And we're almost done with the Piranha fight at the South Figaro Cave, but we're also seeing uh, World of Ruin in South Figaro on Fly Eagle's Fly side. Yeah, you can loot these treasure chests uh, on the outside of South Figaro in both the World of Balance and World of Ruin. So it seems like Fly Eagle's Fly is doing the, uh, the looting route. Remember, taking a look at our flag set here, that uh, looting is shuffle plus 30 percent so that's up from shuffle plus 20 percent which is our standard race flags cheddar goblin is through Rosopus and the piranhas picking up their first shiny stone with ifrit there yeah and fly goes fly did manage to find some earrings for sale in the south figaro world of ruin relic shop mm. little cure action with flair so that's a nice esper to find for uh, casting some magic there for uh, cheddar goblin 
Dragonhorn is a nice pickup there. Uh, let's see if we find some Dragoon Boots. We can... I think he also found... A... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, I... Yeah, he also found a Gauntlet, but I think that's only would be helpful if he had a native uh, jump user. Yeah, so Spears are able to be two-handed, which means the Gauntlet will double their battle power, essentially. And uh, when you're up in the air, you don't really need a shield, right? 20k GP for that Glowing Stone into Zen... Yeah, so we know that's going to pay off, and that's not a terribly expensive rock either. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen them like go for like 60k. Oh, there's an offering for sale if we need to come back later when we have one of those uh, weapons that can work well with an offering. Meanwhile, Fly oh. Eagles Fly is heading to the world of Ruin, Narsh. Yeah, we do. Uh, anyone who did the Lone Wolf check would also know that there's a free offering in the uh, Moogle Cave in World of Ruin as well. All right, so let's see what our choice is here at the weapon shop. Fly Eagles Fly doesn't have a lock, but is able to access this check in spite of it uh, because of YMPC remove. Picks up the Mega Elixir rather reluctantly there. Maybe he was hoping for a better dead check, maybe another experience egg uh, for if his If they trouble. can find... I think if they can find Terra, they can go do the Woke Gate and then get the other one behind that, correct? Yes, that is correct. Yeah, and there's the 20 curse shield that no one's going to do, probably. Yeah, 20 is difficult. I think for this flag set, and I don't know about you guys, but 15 is probably my limit. What about you, Knuckly? I don't know if he has his mic muted because of the birds, <laughs> because that's certainly possible. There it is. <laughs> um, if, if I find the ribbon immediately... Oh, wow. I like to take it because I do grind fights in the South Figaro basement to try and get ahead of scaling. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's an immediate four or five battle jump. Um, but I'd say 16 would probably be my limit. 20 is very high. Yeah, so that can take uh, almost the entire seed to complete, and then you don't get the benefits from it other than the Paladin Shield, but you miss out on all the chances to learn Ultima from it. Yeah, so uh, we did see that Fly Goes Fly did go to the cafe, does have lockdown, and I think Cheddar Goblin went back to the Zen in World of Ruin and got that uh, stray Esper for less than a thousand, unless I miss Saw. Uh, we'll have to see. But yeah, it, it looks like, like 640, I think, was the total. Which yeah, I thought it was cheap at 20k, but yeah, sure. Let's just switch worlds and get it at the budget price. Why That's not? That's basically free Esper. All right, and we're going to see Dell's tune here, which makes perfect sense since you're already in the area. Yeah, so what's interesting is Fly Eagles Fly has not yet increased the levels of his characters. And oh boy, we found a Valiant Knife somewhere. So in part of the looting phase, not only did Fly Eagles Fly find an experience egg, he also found a Valiant Knife, which is really nice. Cheddar Goblin, meanwhile, has much higher levels because he took some grind fights with uh, the Moogle Charm off right before going into the South Figaro Cave check. And that's a good idea because when you have Blitz, you're going to want to get up to level 42 in order to unlock the Bum Rush. I think that straight had Pearl, Haste, and Strength plus two, mm. and one other spell that I missed. Yeah, that Strength plus two is going to look real nice on somebody with Throw, or if you have a physical attacker with uh, the Fight Command there. And we do have a Thrower, it's Mog. This is a reminder, this is one match of Warring Triads. Um, so what we're going to be doing is... The next race, or there is going to be another race that is going to be superimposed with this race. So we'll eventually switch to a four player layout where these two will be on the top and a different race, different seed will be on the bottom. We'll see how that goes. If it gets too confusing, then obviously we won't do this ever again, but we're gonna give it a good old college try here. Yeah, and that's not the uh, regular behemoth, nor is it the Soratra behemoth. That is the Gran Turismo behemoth there on uh, Flygo's Fly Supreme. 
And Cheddar reset. I'm not sure if it was a uh, something uh, he was looking at a check and didn't like what he saw. Monster or it in might have been a box. Okay. That haymaker for 12 HP. Yeah, so this is going to be a really good fight for Fly Eagles Fly here to grind on because these uh, behemoths, the you know, these the GT behemoths, the Great Behemoth, the Giant Behemoth, the Group Grand Behemoth, <laughs> uh, they are going to be good. Meanwhile, Super Bowls for Fire Skeins in the Coliseum, and we know that Cheddar Goblin bought about forty of them. <laughs> so, yeah, we can get Super Bowls for days in this seed, provided we can beat that Scullion, of course. That was a lethal weapon, I think. Yeah, oh, oh whatever. Pallet swap of... <laughs> Still. I don't, I, don't know, I don't know which one's worse, so yeah. I just know they look the same minute, but have different names. Alright, so Fly Eagles Fly after that one fight has already caught up in levels to Cheddar Goblin. So as I mentioned, that is one of the reasons why you kind of bump up the scaling a little bit with the dead checks so that you get way more XP when you do eventually finish your first fight there. It looks like he's not going for the Super Bowl, though. He's looking for something probably easier to take Ooh. on. This is not something easier to take on. <laughs> it's not It's not fun either. But we'll see how he does here. Interesting thing to note is that the Colosseum will never choose Throw as the command. So you might be thinking, oh, my Mog is going to be great here because he's just going to throw stuff at... Uh, at you know, the enemy, but unfortunately Throw never gets picked by the Colosseum AI. I mean, another thing about the Colosseum AI is it never picks the command I want it to pick. <laughs> or casts ridiculous stuff in place of the stuff you actually want. It's like, I don't know why you're casting haste, you're already faster and you just need to jump on him, please. Alright, so that is the Dragoon set complete there for, uh, for Cheddar Goblin and uh, we do know that Mog can naturally equip Basically any spear, but Mog also has throw, so that's quite the conundrum here for Cheddar Goblin. We'll see uh, what he decides to do with his newly minted Dragoon set. And why do we care about spears for the Dragoon? Well, spears will do two times the damage multiplier with jump, whereas all the other weapons do one times the damage multiplier with jump. So it's really, you know, in flavor since that's how the Dragoons have behaved in pretty much all Final Fantasy games before and since. Okay, and both of the runners are now in Daryl's tomb. I find it interesting that Fly Eagles Fly is taking the monster in a box um, because offering is one of the rewards for a dead check. And we also know that there's free offerings uh, in some places. Correct. So is he doing it just to try to get experience or does he not realize there is offerings as a dead check reward it could be a little of both like he could be going for the experience the magic points to learn some spells or uh you know just because he wants to whatever items happen to crawl out of those uh, fights yeah there's also the possibility of getting gigantos which is the single highest xp per level in the game or the set of pugs which have a chance to drop minervas as we have all I'm sorry, I'm just saying we have Ultros 2 here gating the uh, Crusader Esper. Yeah, so with Fire Skeens and that Valiant Knife should not be a problem for our runners. The bosses early on in the Warring Triads flag sets are usually pretty weak because they're based on the number that, of checks that you've done times 2.5. And you start out with zero checks being done. So uh, <laughs> that, uh, that essentially makes them a no-op. As yeah, Fly Eagles Fly uh, getting his second Magisite there from uh, the end of Daryl's Tomb. Yeah, and uh, you know, with the multi-cast espers, uh, that Crusader is going to kill your party multiple times. 
Yeah, so question in the chat. What spears can you get from the Dragoon objective? It's the Aura Lance, the Pearl Lance, or the Partisan. The Partisan is the third highest uh, damage spear, actually. Then it goes either the Gold Lance or the Stout Spear. I don't remember which is which, but they're both below that one. You really want an Aura Lance or a Pearl Lance. The Partisan is not that great. Meanwhile, Fly Eagles Fly is heading back to go get uh, the other Lone Wolf objective, because he's in the world of Ruined Narsh, based on the music. Yeah, and like South Figaro, these uh, particular chests here in the Moogle Caverns uh, have different items in them based on whether you're in World of Ruin or World of Balance. Yeah, it's one of the very few places that you can go uh, to get the chests twice. I think the other one, uh, again, you know, obviously South Figaro, but also the South Figaro Cave is the uh, third one that I know of. And there's your free offering. Along with 8,000 gold just because you're there. Yep, so that's exactly why he went to uh, Moogle. That makes perfect sense there. He's going to combine it with that Valiant knife, it looks like. And I think we're going to see a Dragon Hunt. Yeah, that makes sense. We are getting nice goodies for our dragons. Four of them uh, will unlock Auto Haste and Auto Shell, respectively. So that totally makes sense there. We are still only on four characters, so I don't know if we're going to see Phoenix Cave just yet. Maybe once there's a fifth character in the pool, we can uh, let that guy just sort of be our um, sort of button pusher while the main party goes to take on the Phoenix Cave Dragon. All right. Uh, we're going to see how well this works or doesn't work uh, with flipping the switch here. So Joker and Knuckle, you guys can take over comms for a second while I push all the beepity bops behind the scene. Okay, well, the Ice Dragon spot at uh, World of Rune Narsh turns out to be a Gold Dragon. That's uh, going to be a lot of lightning damage. Uh, so we're going to want to, I think, just, you know, I, I forget what exactly if it was, like, stop or... there. There's a, one of the status effects affects Gold Dragons. I wish I could uh, remember it because it would be super Berserk. Helpful. Berserk does. Okay. Yo, I will have to remember that for my own games. That's for certain because I do not like fighting gold dragon unless i have like uh water based attacks of some kind oh absolutely i am the same way um and just from watching these restreams i have learned what spells affect what dragons and i tend to try to keep that information in my back pocket for my own runs yeah i i think with if Mog was standing and we had some water skeins, uh, Mog would be throwing those water skeins about now. Uh, that's one of the more effective ways to get water damage, but we are through that, so that's our first dragon on the board. Uh, we will still need to get uh, three others for the uh, auto haste, auto. Uh, I forget, what, if, what, was it auto safe? And we're going to save. Uh, I assume we're going to see Tritok check, but maybe not. I don't know. I guess it depends on if he thinks he has the power to get through whoever is there. But, I mean, if you're already taking on dragons, you should be able to take the Tritok spot. Assuming it's not some super rude boss. Uh, meanwhile, we did have uh, Cheddar go and explore Vector, but... Uh, we do have the Y removed, so we could do Magitek facility without Celeste. So I think that might be what we're looking at here. Yep. He's going right through that guy uh, to go and visit the Magitek facility. There is guaranteed projection, but unlike Ultra Sleek, I don't believe you can get uh, Magitek unlock from this. Uh, that was a very common thing in the Ultra Sleek uh, series. But uh, not in the yeah. poltergeist flag set. Yeah, so this is probably just looking for a guaranteed progression. That is Doom Gaze up at the Oh Tricot no! <laughs> uh, Mob goes down, but everyone else is still up. Fatality. Or, 
That's a pretty good uh, odds. You, it's a lot harder when three of them go down and you're trying to use your last one to bring everyone back up. All right, so what we are going to be doing, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is the top screen, Fly Eagles Fly versus Cheddar Goblin. They are going on one seed here, and I believe that the trackers are up to date with everything that they've got. On the bottom half of the seed is a different matchup, Tie Vault 2010 versus Questifer Warkin. And uh, they are also playing the Poltergeist seed. It's the same requirements of seven characters and nine espers. I don't know what their skip is. Uh, uh, their skip is 9, 13, and 21. Okay, so unfortunately I can't give two different uh, goals, so we'll just have to keep that in mind. Uh, but we will keep the, uh, the the tracker as it is with the goals. So they're about say that... to pop off in just a second here. Yeah, I will say like nine characters is a lot more doable than ten, but twenty-one is a fairly safe number for the check skip. And uh, we are through that doom gaze, uh, and I did update the tracker to indicate that Fly Eagles Fly does have one dragon down. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And we'll see what this tri talk turns out to be. That is another shiny rock for Fly Eagles Fly. Phoenix. Getting through that doom gaze there. Yeah, so luckily only the Mog uh, got affected by that doom gaze uh, L5 doom. Okay, we do have a start on the bottom screen now uh, to vote for Christopher Warkin. I see Celeste. I didn't see who else was on the teams, though. It's Mog and Umaro. Okay, that's an interesting combo. Throw again. Was that another throw Mog? <laughs> well, that's going to keep it very interesting between uh, the two runners here, as that's Bahamut up at the top for uh, for Cheddar Goblin. So that's yet and another doing... Magisite there. Yeah, and he's doing the full check. Meanwhile, Chris, Christopher Warkin is doing getting that Dragoon set right off the bat, too. So that's very fast. Yeah, uh, didn't even Tibble, bother shopping, stopping anywhere to shop. Just was like, I'm going to go get this. Peace out. Yeah, what is on that Celeste, by the way? Like, as far as commands? Uh, that I did not see. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to see it when they get into fight uh, something. But it looks like Tybalt found himself a pair of Dragoon Boots. Oh, don't even have to go to Coliseum then. Oh, there's some Shurikens for our throw user. I think we've got a Search the Skies check. Oh no! It's Magi Master! Oh no! Yep, that is a bloop, insta reset. Well, Cheddar Goblin is going on a minecart ride, uh, probably. Missing on the old Minecraft days. Oh, that's not a fight you want to have. No. No, that is one that you run from real quick. That, please. <laughs> I think, if I'm not mistaken, Cheddar Goblin fought Discount Magimaster at the vanilla spot. Okay. We do have Return Camp's check. Uh, both of them went to World of Bounce. Narsh uh, are now just sort of doing their looting phase, I think. Fly Gills Fly is in uh, World of Bounce to Zen, probably going to check on the Thief and see that 20k price tag. Uh, hopefully we'll check World of Ruin and find the much cheaper version. Nope, he's just it's going to pay out the 20k, it looks like. Yeah, usually it doesn't get much cheaper than 20k. It's just rather unfortunate that it's, what, 650 bucks in the other world, so... Yeah, I mean, fortunately... I... Go ahead. I was just going to say that usually you don't have to worry too much about gold in uh, as you get further along, just because, you know, stuff is going to fall into your lap and you'll have plenty of riches. My best find for the Zen Thief was 69 GP, and it was an experience egg. 
Nice. That is insane. I have gotten nine before. <laughs> At 69 GP, I did not care what it was. I was buying it because it's cheaper than a potion. Okay, and we're seeing more or less similar looting routes on the bottom half. Uh, they both did Nars, both did Returners Camp, both were doing South Figaro. Um, Cheddar Goblin did get through that uh, budget Inferno and is one boss away from finishing off the um, Celestless uh, Magitech facility. And it looks like Fly Eagles Fly has gotten the same idea. I think it's they're both after sort of looking for some guaranteed progression is why they're doing this. Yeah, the last check in the Magitech factory is guaranteed to be an Esper or a character. I didn't quite see what it was on Cheddar Goblin's screen, but we've got a Stooges fight, which should get kind of interesting here. Based on his tracker, he is at I, I, four characters, five Magisite. Yeah, you don't. It doesn't tick off until the reward. Uh, excuse me, the check is actually complete, unfortunately. Right. But I think the second check in the Magitech facility was another Esper. Alright, so on the bottom half of the screen, we're doing our looting phase here. Um, I did not know that guy was weak to Edge Zone. Yeah, so Larry is susceptible to instant death. Or, if he's the last one alive, he's also susceptible to just running the heck away and giving you the fight. So, Larry is definitely the stooge that you want to kill last, if you can. Um, or, if you could just instant death him, you could do that too. Yeah, Fly Eagles Fly going out of the way for some of these chests. Uh, I don't know if any of them paid off for him, unfortunately. But, he does have the Valiant Knife, which I don't think Cheddar Goblin found yet. So... That is a definite advantage for him there, and that was an Esper at the end of the Magitech factory for Cheddar Goblin, so that is his fifth, as we mentioned. I don't know if Christopher, I'm sorry, I don't know if Cheddar Goblin uh, has gotten the offering either. I don't, I don't think I saw him go back for it. Natural Magic Tool Cyan down in the basement there. So. And uh, I think they both found that, right? Yeah, so they're still sort of neck and neck, uh, apart from one of them having a Dragoon set. Yeah, what's also interesting is there was just a shop that had a lot of uh, goodies for sale in terms of uh, tools. So we'll see if either one of our runners decide to go back there uh, to get some more tools along the way. Meanwhile, it's Rexol for Fly Eagles Fly. Uh, this is the second time we've seen him, right? He, we, he's at the second spot at Magitech Factory. He's at the first spot. Okay. Yeah, this is this is Efrid Shiva spot. Yeah, Cyan very famously doesn't like magic or tools. Uh, and there's an air anchor in the South Figaro basement there. So that's a nice tool to have because now that's our instant death taken care of if we decide to keep Cyan along for the ride here. Christopher Walken has elected to put that Dragoon set on Mog. Mm. Um, so making good use of the natural uh, jumper. Yeah, I well, believe. Not natural jumper, but, you know, spear wielder. Ooh. Did you see that Esper? Bismarck has Ultima on it. And Merton. <laughs> Wow. And we do know we do know there's an economizer for sale in the World of Bounce Narsh Relic Shop. So those could be very cheap if you know where to go to and have the funds for it. Alright, so Questifer Warkin taking off the Moogle Charm for some grind fights here. Meanwhile, Tybalt doing some sequence breaking here at the Narsh Weapon Shop. And we'll have a choice between an Ifrit and a gem box. Easy choice there. Easy peasy choice. Like, gem box is really just money, but Ifrit is Ifrit. But Let's later stand. on, that gem box could come in handy if you pair it with an economizer on an ultimate user. 
Oh, a minimum battle curse shield of 11 as well. But yeah, take a you're look definitely at the right hand side of the screen, folks. We have a stray cat fight, and that Celeste has rage as her command. So that's Questifer Warkin with an endgame online uh, Celeste right there. Very nicely done. Yeah, just uh, have her channel her inner feline, and uh, that should be good. Uh, Tybalt is going to go ahead and do the uh, uh, Coliseum now, and we'll try and get the... Well, you use the Amaro to try and get uh, that Dragoon set, it looks like. Cheddar uh, Goblin. At the I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, I was just saying, going to say the same thing you were. Cheddar Goblin's doing the Lone Wolf check. Yep, so he's going to get his uh, choice between his... Uh, his offering uh, or the um, the the magicite here is going to wisely pick the magicite. So that's going to be number six for Cheddar Goblin there. And Knuckle Kong was correct. That is a vanilla budget magic master. So what is Tybalt looking for in the uh, in the Coliseum there? He picks up a Ragnarok sword. Nicely well, done. You know, if you're going to get a dragoon set, so you might as well get a Ragnarok sword with it. Oh yeah, of course. I, I like to order my uh, dragoon with a side of Ragnarok. <laughs> Cheddar is doing um, is going to go for a four character uh, Narsh um, Kefka Narsh fight. Meanwhile, another great item here, a offering for uh, a Echo Screen as uh, Umaro's got to fight off this undead enemy. It's too bad we can't tell him. Thorough revivify at him. <laughs> All right, what are we going to see at Kafka at Narsh? I think Fly Eagles fly past on this check. That's correct. So we don't yeah. know what's, on, what's here yet. We know it's not a character because I think it was an imp sprite. Okay, he's through the first part, and well done getting through that. Oh, Guardian is taking the role of Kefka this time around, though. Yeah, Guardian is usually pretty, uh, pretty beefy in terms of HP, but we do have access to Lightning via Bolt Edges, and uh, we got Blitz, so I think we'll be okay here. Okay, and Fly equals Fly is finding out the bad news about wanting to have some smoke bombs. Ty getting that offering as well. Ragnarok going on Celeste, so there it is. Ragnarok Stray Cat Celeste, which is ridiculous. Did Tybalt get the Stray Cat yet? Oh, that's right. He did not get the Stray Cat yet, but... Ty is putting the offering with the Ragnarok, which is a big mistake. The offering basically does the same amount of damage as one Ragnarok swing, just split over four targets instead of to one. So maybe he's doing that early on because he doesn't have a lot of MP. We'll see if he swaps off that eventually. Torado is the Esper for Cheddar Goblin at Kefka at Narsh, so that is going to be his seventh Esper in his eighth check there. Fly Eagles Fly hit making his way through the minecart ride. We know that there's an Esper at the end of this for him. And uh, we're looking kind of thin on where our next character is for our top runners. We haven't done Phoenix Cave yet, and we haven't done Go Go Zone Eater, but I think we've seen pretty much everything else. Uh, am I correct there, Joker? Uh, I believe so, because I, I think that's it. I think it's either uh, Phoenix Cave or, uh, or Moogle Defense. Zone Eater. Oh, yeah, Moogle Defense. Yeah, because Fly and, Eagles Fly did Lone Wolf at the very beginning and skipped out on Moogle Defense because uh, he wanted to get some grind fights done first. I mean, Cheddar went ahead and did Kefka and Narsh with four people. He could very well go ahead and do Moogle Defense with four people, too. We'll see if that's if he, uh, if he goes back or if he... Nope, he's just leaving. All right, meanwhile, Mr. Warkin at the top for Lone Wolf here on his side. And Tybalt's heading through the Magitech factory. 
Yeah, you got low. Oh, it's not seat coins breaking this time because they start with Celeste. That is correct. And that 11 battle curse shield is basically a must do here. So we'll uh, we'll see what uh, Cyan is rocking with. And that is an Esper there at Lone Wolf for uh, Questifer Warkin. So that's going to put him on the board for Shiny Stones there as well. And Siren's a pretty nice one to have for the final fight in case you don't get mute anywhere else. Minerva in the Magitek factory as well. So that Celeste has got the Ragnarok and the Minerva. Meanwhile, Cheddar Goblin sets his party down to one character, so you know what this means. It's bridge throw count time. How do you? How many times do you think he's going to get thrown off the bridge? I'm going to go with two here, because I, I like I'm to save me a bridge troll. I mean, I'm always more um, frustrated when they just stay on one half, so you can't ever even try to get across. Those jerks. Meanwhile, Questifer Warkin is going to do Kefka at Narsh here while he's up doing Lone Wolf. And oh no, it's the tentacles at low levels. This is a horrific fight when you uh, don't have a lot of HP. Because the, grabby, the grabby pasta will uh, allow you to uh, get grabbed. But unfortunately, they do like a fixed 60 to 59 to 61 damage per hit. So this is not going to end very well here for uh, for for Tybalt. Did Christopher Warkin reset out of the like after to, before uh, saving after Kefka and Narsh? Uh, I don't believe so. Or, or am I just confused? And I, I guess I might be confused. Um, yeah, it was Cheddar Goblin did Kefka and Narsh previously. All right, I'm, my bad. Yeah, this I'm I'm sorry for confusing everybody with the. The racers on top are racing one seed. The racers on the bottom are racing a different one. But if it's if this is too too bad, then obviously we won't do this again. Um, but you I, I think I just confused myself. That's all. <laughs> oh no, I've gone cross side. Uh, meanwhile, we do see a reset on Tybalt's side. Uh, you know, the tentacles are just that bad sometimes. Oh yeah, at level three, tentacles are horrific. One of the worst enemies to fight in the game, for sure. And Christopher Warkin's having my level of luck at dodging those uh, ads for uh, the uh, Kefka and Narsh fight, because I usually have to take out, like, four of them, because I'm just not good at the timing for that. Fly Eagles Fly, meanwhile, doing 8,000 damage with his Valiant Knife user, Locke, at the moment. So Locke is officially online with that VK and that offering. Uh, we just gotta kill Curly, who keeps bringing his characters back to life here. Maybe he's trying to do a stooge grind. You don't get more XP each time you kill a stooge, unfortunately. Don't tell them that. <laughs> Meanwhile, it's Sriracha Senior, Senor, Sir Scrontium Behemoth for Questifer Warkin. Who looks like they are doing the Wind God Celeste power play here with that Tempest and the Stray Cat. Meanwhile, Cheddar Goblin did eventually finish Zone Eater. Uh, it was not an Esper, it was a dead check. So, so un Tybalt, unfortunately, it was not a dead check, it was Strego. Oh, I did not see that. Okay. So there was our our fifth character was at Zone Eater, so that was one of the places, right, that we said it was either Zone Eater or Phoenix Cave or Mughal Defense, and there are some snipers for sale that a whole smattering of users can do. So the downside is now that we have to probably do Strago checks. Yeah, so that's the Magitek, uh, not the, that's Fanatics Tower, <laughs> the Ebbets Rock, or. Uh, or the Burning House. Meanwhile, Sabin is our fifth character there at uh, Doma Siege, and Realm is our other fifth character at Mughal Defense, so a pair of characters for our bottom runners that can send them in wildly different places here. That's the divergence I like to see. Meanwhile, it is Ghost Train. I don't know if any of the characters here have suplex, unfortunately. Yeah, our blitz is on our top half of the screen, not the bottom half of the screen.
Resopus and the Piranhas, my favorite metal band from uh, Final Fantasy VI, for Fly Eagles Fly. Cheddar Goblin has given us some new information for uh, that race, doing one of Strago's checks, Ebbets Rock. Okay, he's through the uh, Coral check, and here we have Rappa. Oh, good. Oh, that Ghost Train has done some damage to Tybalt. Yeah, so it's... Oh, he could use that Pearl Rod and end this fight basically right now. But it is important, folks, to get off of level 3. Because level 3 is not the place you want to be. You can fight the soldiers at Doma Siege, basically, before you do this. Um, that is an option that you could do in order to gain some levels. But you're going to want to gain some levels before taking any fights here. Cheddar, Cheddar Gobble um, just sends that Narapa to the Phantom Zone. Yeah, and running out, that means that's another character, and that is Edgar. So that's already up to six there for Cheddar Goblin. All that training paid off. Natural jump on him as well. Oh, double jumpers. Questifer Warkin, meanwhile, uh, is in a cave somewhere. This must be Moogle Defense. Uh, and he's got Chatternook. So one thing you can do if you have Umaro in your team is you can use the running away animation in order to allow Umaro to not take his turn and wait for Chatternook to turn from girl to demon. And that way, that will allow Umaro to actually hit the demon form properly. But yikes! Getting bodied by that first counterattack there. Yeah, this is a rough, another one that can be rough early on, I think. But... Uh, once you have, like, some answers, it, uh, Chatter Nook's not really that much of a problem, but, you know, if you don't have those answers. Mm. Yeah, we'll counterattack with lightning spells, and unfortunately we don't get thunder shields from dead checks in this seed like we normally would. Hopefully Mog can carry here with his jumping ability, and there it is! Painting yeah, down was... for Questifer Warkin. Let's see if the Moogle Defense yields a character in the top half of the runner's screen, and it does not. So, no realm, as Mr. Warkin gets uh, for his side. And we already know where a six character is with Sabin at uh, the, the Dome of Siege. Yeah, uh, did he, did Tal get through the siege, or did he lose mm -hmm. to the boss there? No, did not get through that boss. That was the Phantom Train, or the Ghost okay, Train. Okay, yeah. But now that he's taken a grind, one grind fight, folks, has allowed him to get from level 3 to level 11. So now he should be good for this Ghost Train here. Yeah, so right now it seems like the path for the upper... Uh, pair is going to be through that uh, zone eater because uh, Fly Eagles Fly still hasn't gone there yet. And right now we're going to be seeing some of Edgar's checks. Oh, it's only a dragon horn, and that's a reset from Cheddar Goblin. Does not want to bump up the scaling, so is going to take a no on that uh, free check there. I, I like that play. Any free check, I usually save before it in this flag set, and if it's not something I need, I'll just reset. Meanwhile, Tybalt gets through that Ghost Train fight without a problem the second time around. Yeah, just sometimes levels are the answer. Uh, meanwhile, Christopher Warkin is going to be doing that same fight. Uh, I Okay, we're going to see Phoenix Cave on Cheddar Goblin's side. I thought he was just going to go and do uh, Edgar's checks, but it looks like he wants to go get that Phoenix Cave Dragon instead. Yeah, this makes sense, uh, although it would make more sense if I was Fly Equals Fly, because we're down to either Zone Eater or Phoenix Cave for your last character. And unfortunately, it's Marvel Shoes for Moogle Defense. Yuck, throw those kicks in the trash. Get uh, rid of them. Ghost Trillion is down on Quister Warkin side, so Sabin has joined uh, his party as well. Very character heavy in the bottom seed. Uh, thus far. Meanwhile, the top seed has been very not character heavy. So interesting differences between our uh, our races here, folks. 
Yeah, and that's what I mentioned. I've done comms for a couple of these uh, flag sets, and one yesterday was incredibly like laid out. So there's just plenty of options to go through. I think like each of the starting three characters had a character at one of their checks. Uh, but I've also seen uh, Poltergeist Fury flag set uh, or Poltergeist Fury seed where it was an extremely linear path and this was the only option, the correct option if you wanted to get characters. So it can go either way. All right, so Fly Eagle's Fly is bearing down on his character here finally from the Zone Eater check. What I might have done is I might have done Phoenix Cave because you get a forced party reform at the end of Phoenix Cave, and then you can use that to take your team down to one, to go into the Zone Eater. But either way, he is going to be happy because he's going to finally get uh, his fifth character. Meanwhile, uh, Tybalt grabbing uh, Siren from the top of uh, Narsh there at the, uh, the Lone Wolf spot. So that is going to be his uh, next check. He's done three of them so far. As I try and keep my bearings about us, and Warkin is on five. And what? Where was Realm? Was the Mughal defense right? Realm was that Mughal defense. That is correct. And it looks like Saban's okay. command is not all that great, so he's going back. And that is Fly Eagles Fly's second time off the bridge there. So our Chancellors are getting a good workout here for our upper runners. Oh. He almost gets a, uh, a bridge throw number three there. Finally sneaking by. Meanwhile, Imperial Camp is a merchant sprite, so that is not going to be a character. Will be an Esper or an item or a quest for Wark in there. Okay, we got a dragon fight incoming on the treasure side. Ooh. The it's a very dirty dragon. dragon. Yeah, clean that, clean that one off. Dirt Durgan here. By the way, I want to give some shout outs to some of our new followers, uh, Dracond87 and Oribolt. Thanks for coming out from uh, the Blitz Command and into our chat. Also, Knuckly Kong giving out two community subs. Thank you so much, Knuckly, for not only doing the tracking on this wild race here, but uh, for being a supporter of the community. All of our uh, subs and donations here on Twitch go towards future charity events uh, that our Racers for Worlds Collide will be running in. We are doing uh, not necessarily a charity event, but a showcase tomorrow, Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern. We're doing a multi-world showcase. Uh, one of our community members, Seto Kayaba, will be playing Worlds Collide in a multi-world scene with his buddy uh, Zeno, who will be playing A Link to the Past Randomizer. So yes, Final Fantasy VI Worlds Collide is currently in the beta program for Archipelago Multi-World. If you're interested in that at all, make sure you join our Discord there, as that is a gem box for Cheddar Goblin from that dragon fight. Not a very good dead check reward there, unfortunately. Yeah, it's mostly just sell for cash, I think. Halidor is the result of that Imperial camp check. Nice, so that's another Esper on the board there for Questa for Warkin. So that is two apiece for uh, our bottom race. We're about to see the result of the Phoenix Cave. Yeah, so I wonder if our runners are going to go try for those four dragons to get the auto haste and auto shell that I mentioned. And the Gigantos monster in a box here for Questifer Warkin in Imperial Camp. And that's Unicorn at the end of Phoenix Cave, so that's a nice Esper for Questifer, uh, for rather Cheddar Goblin. And we got the uh, Flying Magi Master up on uh, Fly Eagle's Fly side. Yuck. I think we're doing the SR Behemoth uh, fight here at the end of Kefka and Narsh. So, but Fly Eagles Fly did have Berserk oh, for the Magic Master fight. Nice. So, Berserking Magic Master basically means he's not going to really hurt you by attacking. You just have to figure out how you're going to hurt him. Very high physical defense and evade. 
pretty high uh, magical defense, although Berserk sort of just negates that because he won't use the wall change ability. And uh, there you see Fly Eagles Fly damaging down his Valiant Knife user, so he's going to be doing more damage. Uh, throw Even at full HP, he was hitting for 12, 1500 per swing. Oh, jeez. <clears throat> we got Waterfall uh, jumping going on with Mr. Morgan's side. <laughs> Well, that's one way to reduce the HP, is to uh, proc with the wing edge. <laughs> okay, it's Haydn and the Haydenites, the pop rock band. Yeah, and it looks like Quest for Warkin is going to be showing off that stray cat now. There it is. Yeti yeeting Celeste at the undead SR behemoth there. Meanwhile, Shutter Goblin finding some enhancers for half price in the world of Ruin South Figaro. That's really nice. Plus seven magic power to anybody who could equip that. Ramu is the Esper for getting through that Magi Master fight, so that is a nice one for Fly Eagles Fly to have there. Yeah, that gives us uh, some options for using Thunder Attacks. Uh, Tibalt is through the, uh, gets his marble shoes. Something, something pumped up kick something. I only listen to the bard core version of that song, so. I don't know what that is, so I might have to investigate. It's, this, this guy took pumped up kicks, converted the lyrics to Old English, like the Anglo-Saxon language, and sang it. <laughs> there you go. Thou must runneth. <laughs> anyway, Christopher Warkin, after being like TLC and chasing some waterfalls, let's see what's at the bottom here from this Hyden and the Hyden Knights fight. Meanwhile, Fly Eagles Fly doing some sequence break action for uh, Mount Zozo. Now, remember, since he doesn't have Cyan, this may or may not be a character, but it's definitely not in logic with the seed. We know that his next character has to be in one of Strago's checks, and we know from Cheddar Goblin that it's Ebbets Rock. We do have uh, Cheddar Goblin going for his Magi Master fight. Oh, that was a really nasty way to start. Tyrannosaurus here, as part of the Mughal defense, is never fun, this pincer attack formation. However, if Tybalt can get through this fight, he will get a lot of XP. Cyan's still dancing in place with uh, that curse shield count. Remember, it is 11 for the bottom runners, so highly beneficial. Meanwhile, that was a seventh character at the bottom of Baron Falls. That was also Strago. Fly goes fly finds the Esper Alexander at Mount Zozo. Yeah, so that'll put him at uh, at eight Espers there. So right now, uh, Christopher Warkin just needs to get some, a couple, uh, a, well, a ton of Espers, it looks like. Uh, loaded for characters now and could very well get that character skip though. Yeah, so that's the third Esper for him there at the uh, at the Narsh Weapon Shop. Meanwhile, Fly Eagles Fly is going to take that Esper he just learned. I think he's going to backtrack and do this dragon here. Cheddar is an Esper away from uh, Kefka unlock. He needs seven characters, unfortunately, not six. Yeah, I, I, I thought I said that. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought you said an Esper away. Either way, you're correct. He is one away now from that Kafka unlock. He needs to find another character, as that is his ninth Esper there, uh, from Magi Master in the Search the Sky spot. Can you imagine accidentally flying into that in the seed? Disgusting. I'm not sure if it's on my end or on your end, but I am getting a bit of stuttering, so I'm not sure if I'm getting cut off or if you're getting cut off. Uh, hopefully it's just me? 
I don't know. Chat will also have to let me know. My end, I'm not getting any stutter. Okay. We got Quester for Warkin taking on a gold dragon. Uh, I might disappear for a second. I'll try to be back as soon as possible. Yep, no problem. All right, so as mentioned in the chat, um, we do have a mentor program. It's in our Discord. There are forms in the Beginner's House channel that allow you to fill out a request for a live mentor, or you can do a VOD review where one of the mentors will review a video and give you some tips and tricks. So make sure you join our Discord for that. As Cheddar Goblin is heading down to the Ancient Castle, and I think he's exhausted pretty much every other option for in-logic checks other than this uh, Edgar Luke here, Knuckle Kong. Has he done Fanatic's Tower yet? Uh, oh, I forgot. We have Strago stuff. Uh, I'm <laughs> back, by the way. I usually block that out of my mind. You're correct. We have not done Fanatic's Tower or Burning House. So it's either Edgar Fanatic's stuff Tower is or Fanatic's by Tower far or... my least favorite check. Well, I like the fact that it can be three checks in one, and it's guaranteed to be progression. But having to walk all the way up and all the way down, and only being able to use magic, sure puts a hindrance on things. Hello. Welcome back, Joker Mage. Uh, do we still uh, sound weird? Uh, no, I think my vpn was sending me through uh a server in texas or something and i don't know if there's some internet issues going on there or something but it seems there. to be better now <laughs> it's cold there so it might be you know their, their power grid and all that uh no we do know that cheddar goblin does have the ooh. berserk spell and that was celeste down in the engine room so guess what folks that is go mode for Cheddar Goblin here. Now, does Cheddar Goblin want to try for some kind of skip at this point? Uh, obviously, checks are look a little low, but maybe try to hunt down a couple extra espers. Uh, so what is their skip? Is it 10 characters, 11 espers, 21 I checks? I think so. I think it was checks. 10, 11, 23. Yeah, so two more espers is not a bad idea, right? We Let's think about some of the checks that we have now. Celeste gives us basically a free one at her, uh, at her South Figaro Prisoner spot. And we have access to Magitech Factory, which is two very fast checks for espers. However, our runners have already sequence broken into the Magitech Factory. So that, unfortunately, is not an option for either one of them there. There's also uh, Cheddar Goblin's only on one dragon, so do you would you want to go for extra dragons, or at least maybe one, and then do the two dragons in Kefka's Tower? Yeah, the problem with doing the two dragons in Kefka's Tower is you have to split your party or send your full party down one lane and warp out and come back. As we see a 1v1 Umaro versus Chatternook fight here for... Uh, for Tybalt, we'll see if he could pull this one out. Well, you, you can do both dragons one pass with a full party sweep in the right side. Uh, you have to like go all the way to switches and then just have your right hand, the, the right side party go down the center path backwards. Yes, that is correct. You can do that, but then you also then have to warp out of the tower to reform your party anyway. Right, so. It's one I of mean, you can things. also. It, it, like, you could also link in the clearing the center path of, of the Guardian and Poltergeist statue, too. Uh, I, you, you still are going to warp out, but it's an option if you wanted to just do uh, two dragons outside, two dragons inside. Looks like Cheddar Goblin's going to take on the dragon at Opera House. Makes sense. That's probably the easiest one to get to. Yep, um, we also have the uh, the one in Mount Zozo, which is relatively close. I mean, it's it's some travel distance. And then we have that Fanatic's Tower Dragon, which uh, is actually probably closer than the Mount Zozo one. But you got to be comfortable with the, uh, the, the using only of magic thing. But if he's going for dragons, he was already 
at Edgar's checks. Yeah, short circuiting out. Meanwhile, ooh wow at Umaro Cave, it is Gao there for uh, Questifer Warkin. So he is almost at his skip, because in their seed, skip is at nine characters and not ten. Meanwhile, the yeah. Yeti does take down the Chad. Huge plays for the Yeti there on uh, Tybalt's screen. And uh, that means that he is going to get out of Mughal defense with a realm. Very yeah, nicely done. The big issue that's the the bottom race is facing is where your Esper's at, because they seem to be able to find the characters easy enough, but they're still only on two and three Esper's respectively right now. And that's that's my fear for these seeds. I always prefer to get the early Esper's and late characters. All right, so it looks like Questifer Warkin is going to head to uh, Mount Zozo here. Going to potentially take out yet another dragon in his quest to get to four. As Cheddar Goblin did take out that Opera House dragon there, so we'll mark that down for him. Going straight to Kefka's Tower at this point. Yep, that makes sense. Maybe he wanted to learn one or two more things. Although it looks like he is overloading the middle party, so we may see a Toilet Atma and a Dragon play from him. So this might be the four dragons, as you mentioned, Joker Mage, two in the tower and uh, two yeah, outside the tower. You just need to make sure you you organize it right with the... Um, like you need. I think it needs to either be center or right needs to be your full party, because uh, the, oh. the group on... The group on the the left is going to be going down the center thing first, and they're going to be locked out. Yeah, that is a three out of four freeze for Fly Eagles Fly. Not what you want to see there for the Ice Dragon. I think what you would need, uh, Joker, for your strategy is a full right, because the problem is you can't get to the center statues with the switches, with the weights, if you don't beat the Inferno spot. And you can't beat the Inferno spot with just one character. Oh yeah, yeah, the, the ambush, that's correct. Meanwhile, Boo D Blue Durgan for Questifer Warkin, and Tybalt is at the top of the World of Ruin Narsh, so he'll be getting uh, his Gao at some point along the way, as well as gonna take out this dragon and get his dead check at Triton. So yeah, so Cheddar is only going to be able to get the um, Toilet Atmos spot and one of the dragons, not both then. I'm not entirely sure what the benefit of this is. Um, I mean, this, this is would have been a very standard play in Ultras League, just because this is how you would often get your last two checks for skip. But the the count check count is way too low for that to be the the route. You might want some extra uh, extra XP there, as that is Bahamut at Mount Zozo. And unfortunately for Tybalt, he cannot keep his characters alive. Cheddar Goblin found an economizer at the one at the toilet Atma fight. Not bad. At this point in the seed, though, MP is pretty palpable, right? There's a lot of it to go around, so. It's... I mean, if he if he had Ultima, uh, it would be very useful, but. For any other spells at this point, you probably don't need it. Alright, and Questifer Warkin heading into the Collapsing House. See what's in the monsters in a box here. And there is Katana Soul, the one that you want to see. Using the Sketch command, so Sketch will actually potentially insta-kill Katana Soul here. So we'll see if that actually happens. So it's a vanilla realm with sketch for their bottom runners. 
There it is. Boom shakalaka. The Slayer Edge taking out Katana Soul in one hit. Nice heads Very up play there done. for uh, for for Questifer Warkin. Yeah, you'd love to see it. Ty, meanwhile, decides not to continue on the World of Ruin Narsh top path. So they will have to come back later for uh, for their Gao and their dead check. Or maybe not. Because they could probably find a seventh character along the way here. That's an imp sprite at the bottom, so it is going to be a Esper or an item at Collapsing House, and it's 14k for the Dizen Thief in the bottom half of our screen. Yeah, that's pretty affordable. Meanwhile, uh, Fly Eagles Fly getting the ninth Esper there. At least that's what his tracker said, so I'm going to go ahead and mark that. Because his tracker on a stream is not the same as what we see otherwise. And so he's just missing the Celeste, which I think was Ebbets Rock. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, and... The racers at the top have been doing a very good job exhausting their mm. checks. So, oh, uh, Cheddar Goblin's got the levels, I guess, for uh, Bum Rush. Yeah, that makes sense as to why he was doing the uh, the Toilet Atmos spot. Meanwhile, Questifer Warkin uh, goes and buys to Zen Thief. Unfortunately, it is just a Megalixir there. Yeah, getting Bum Rush online, they, that makes a whole lot more sense Like it, with that as context. Meanwhile, uh, I don't remember. This boat was an Esper, right, at uh, Collapsing House? So that's going to be the third one for Ty here. Question from the chat, why is it called Bum Rush? Uh, bad translation. <laughs> That's the answer I will give you. Because I don't want to speculate any further. I mean, that's usually the safe answer with a lot of the uh, uh, games in this era. Alright, so that is Calmness Protection, actually, from the Collapsing House of Golem. Fire 3 and Magic Power plus 1 and Flare and Doom. So that is the Jackpot Esper there. For our bottom runners. Cheddar Goblin picking up Bum Rush at level 42 with his Blitz character. So now he has Bum Rush on uh, on his Blitz user, uh, which I think is Setzer. And potentially Bum Rush on Gogo -Go if you allow him the, uh, the, the command. Meanwhile, Quake coming out <laughs> on Fly Eagles Fly screen. Thanks for uh, knocking my locks HP down a little bit for this boss here. Looks like we're overloading the right side here, so I think we're going to do Ambush and then the fourth dragon. Yeah, and since he's already did the other dragon the first time around, uh, he'll get his uh, auto haste auto save and possibly just go ahead and clear center route using this group too. I mean, that's definitely what I would do is uh, go ahead and just take the right hand party and just clear out as much as I can with it alright so this is not a character here at Kafka and Narsh it is a guardian though yeah so we know that the uh, that there is definitely a character at Ebbets Rock I don't think we've seen the peak at Fanatic's Tower and we definitely haven't seen Burning House so Fly Eagles Fly running out of checks to find that seventh character in order to catch up to Cheddar Goblin, who is in Kefka's Tower trying to fight off that uh, that fourth dragon here. Yeah, I'd say Cheddar has a pretty solid lead at this point, with, uh, uh, just because, you know, you already got what you need and you've already cleared out some of the tower. Um, I would... I am uh, also... Um, Hmm. Let me come back to this once I think it through some more. 
All right, it is Tri Talk there for Questifer Warkin at Ebbets Rock. Thankfully, we do learn fire spells with the Poltergeist's Fury flag set, so this shouldn't be too bad of an issue, although not all of his characters are going to be able to damage Tri Talk here. Yeah, I think if I was in Fly Eagle's uh, situation, Ebbets Rock would probably be very high on my list at this point. Uh, just because it's a very short list, but that list also includes Burning House, and I'm not... I think I'd pick Ebbets Rock over Burning House, right? Oh, yeah. Ebbets Rock is way shorter than Burning House. Yeah, Burning House, I always struggle with avoiding the fixed but not fixed encounters. Yeah, those flame dodges can be a bit of a problem. And that is an Esper there for Ty on the bottom. We'll see if he decides to head backwards to take on the second dragon for him and his seed. Okay, Christopher Larkin is through that Tritok. And Cheddar Goblin got through Vargas, which, you know, that was our ambush. Okay. Alexander is the reward there for Ebbets Rock. And we got Bahamut on the uh, tire belt. <laughs> Bahamut is very good in this flag set because of the fact that multi summon is on. But that Bahamut has speed plus two and uh, Ultima as well. And hey, look, it's Celeste at one of the Edgar spots. So we're going to go ahead and get Celeste as our last character. I forgot Fly Eagles Fly. Did do Ebbets Rock already because he has Edgar, right? Yep. So a bit of quick trivia. Um, Tybalt is uh, from the uh, Final Fantasy IV Free Enterprise community as well. And uh, in Free Enterprise, our nickname for Bahamut is Blarg. Uh, and, and I will say that uh, Bahamut Esper is probably the most Blargiest Bahamut I've ever seen. <laughs> Yeah, so chat, let's hear it from you. Uh, are there any other randomizers that you play? And if there are, what are they? Uh, I play Super Mario World and A Link to the Past randomizer for part of our multi-world. I know that there's a couple of free enterprise uh, people in the booth as well, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so the only randomizers that I've done are... Uh... Like second gen Pokemon, uh, Final Fantasy VI Worlds Collide, and A Link to the Past. I I do uh, Free Enterprise Worlds Collide, and a uh, couple games under Archipelago Multi World, so I'm mostly Stardew Valley and Six V. Super Mario RPG, Pokemon, Majora's Mask is another one. I know that we have uh, some people in our multi-world that play Ocarina of Time and Link's Awakening, so some other Zelda randomizer games. There's also a version of uh, Link to the Past, I think they combined with Metroid. Yes, that is true. I am not very good at Super Metroid, otherwise I'd give that a try. I used to play Super Metroid randomizer, but I am terrible with doing the trick, so I gave up. To figure uh, out, um, you know, dodging flames, uh, Christopher Warkin is just running from them, it looks like. Meanwhile, we do have Guardian up on Cheddar's, and it is just Umaru. We got Dabbing Yeti. Yeah, so if you are new to the Final Fantasy VI Worlds Collide community, you can join our Discord, where we sort of have a mentor program that's aimed at newer players to help them get onboarded to everything that the randomizer is all about. It's in the pinned links in the beginner's house, so check that out if you are interested. Uh, yep. Meanwhile, Fly Eagles Fly <laughs> heading down to the ancient castle. So this is a dragon and a reward. Remember, Cheddar Goblin short-circuited out of here when he got his go mode, so we don't know what the reward is down here. He's having a little trouble with the step. There we go. Oh, nope, he didn't do it. 
Yeah, FF4FE is Final Fantasy IV Free Enterprise, so that's the randomizer for that. There we go. <laughs> we do have a Dome of Dream on the Tybalt side. You, I'd say that's usually a very solid thing to check if you have Cyan. Yeah, so it gives you three rewards. You only have to fight two bosses, and you level up your sword tech to max. Meanwhile, Casa del Fuego for Questifer Wark in here after heading through uh, Ebbets Rock. This is definitely a proximity play from him. And our first statue boss of the night in the upper right-hand corner, and it is the Spicy Chicken. Yeah, and that's Vanilla Spot, I believe. Because uh, Cherry Goblin's still doing his uh, main group through the center kind of thing. Fly Eagle's uh, Fly just got KT Skip complete, so he's got to be at 23 checks, because he's only at 9 or 10 espers and uh, 3 dragons. I think he, yeah, he just got... Now. Yeah, that sign, I think, was go mode or something, right? No, the, the uh, dragon was got... the skip. Oh, okay, he got to skip off the dragon? Yep. Does he go into a fourth dragon, or is he just going to run in? Uh, that is a good question, because he's already done the op... No, he has one, two... He has four dragons on his screen, I'm sorry. I'm terrible at tracking. <laughs> it's also very difficult to track uh, for... Runners, so thank you, Knuckly Kong, for for helping out here as well. Because <laughs> four other, runners, two separate seeds. <laughs> otherwise, it'd be ridiculous. That is another Esper for Ty there, so that puts him up to five. Christopher Walken is through the Ultras for Chupon, who gets Madwin for the trouble. So that was an Esper, yeah? At, uh, yeah, Madigan. Yep, perfect. Yeah, so Fly is just getting out of the Sandcastle right now. And Shadow Goblin has our first statue boss down. And has to warp out of the tower, because remember, he stacked his entire party in Party 3. So now he has to walk back through Kefka's tower in order to uh, go ahead and fight the other two statues. The good news for him is that those side statues are going to be much easier than Fly Eagles Fly, but the problem is he's up against a ticking clock, as we'll see the power of Kefka Tower skip here on Fly Eagles Fly's screen. Although Fly is uh, stopping it to Zen first. And Christopher Warkin has also decided that Doma Dream is worth it. Yeah, that makes sense, because the first and third locations in Cyan's Dream can only be an Esper or an item. And since we already have our character go mode in his case, that makes total sense as to why he'd be looking for Espers. It does look like Setzer's here, though. All right, so, so that'll, that... that'll, be, that'll be his Kefka Tower skip as well. Yeah, Christopher Walken's in really good shape if he can get uh, some Espers off. Well, we know this first check is an Esper, because we saw it on Ty's screen. It just matters if the throne is an Esper. Yeah, so if the throne is an Esper, that is complete go mode and skip for Christopher Horkin, right? That is correct. Which, um, I have a separate timer for them than the timer that's on the screen. The timer that's on the screen is for the top runners. For the bottom runners, they are at 57 minutes and 40 seconds. So we're yeah, potentially looking at a one-hour go mode in the Poltergeist Seed, which is absolutely insane. Now, I don't, I don't want to jinx the our top runners, but it would still be pretty interesting if, like, someone on the bottom finished first. Uh, I, again, it's also you know different seed, so obviously correct. there's going to be a difference there. But I just think it'd be an interesting thing to watch. All right, so that's Esper number eight for Mr. Warkin, and he will get uh, Setzer, you said, at the end of this year? Yeah, it, it looks like Setzer was uh, laying down on the ground there. Yep, there he is. Natural jump Setzer as well. Yeah, and you can see him failing that jump there, actually, on the ghost train. 
What well, makes you wonder how good that jump ability is on Setzer? Might as well and keep sword on the bench. <laughs> I don't know if we have a sword tech crew user on the bottom. Yeah, I don't think so. Maybe Gao, because he's got that ability to have two. And there it is, an yeah. Esper oh. on the throne. Yeah, so Christopher Watkins not in no mode yet, but he does have go mode at the end of this. Just has to get through that uh, pesky Kefka early. Meanwhile, great um, turnaround for Ty here after struggling through a couple of early fights as he's only three espers away from go mode as well. And Setzer has some very fast checks. He's got the colon Janin. He's got that search the sky, which is super fast, and you only have to, uh, and rather, it's only an Esper and item reward. And then Daryl's Tomb, you can actually peek what the reward is first, so. Not bad. All right, so the real question here is whether that tower skip is going to give Eagles the edge here. Well, this is his first boss here, his first statue boss of Goddess. That is an economizer for Tybalt there at uh, the Colon Jinin, so not useful to him now. However, when he learns Ultima, that will certainly be of very much use to him. I think he is still working on uncursing the shield. I think he might have gotten an Esper that teaches it. I think. Yeah, Golem teaches uh, Ultima. Yeah. Okay. Meanwhile, Cheddar Goblin here setting up the uh, the switches for his party. If Fly Eagles Fly is not having much luck with this goddess, I think. No. Uh-oh. Oh, never mind. I take that back. Cheddar Goblin accidentally deleted the weight. Thankfully, if this ever happens to you, you could run into another room and come back out and the weight will magically be there. Yes, the perils of Y remove. Yeah, you could soft lock. I did not know your... Y remove worked on the weights. Yeah, you could soft lock yourself pretty hard with Y remove if you're not careful. We do have a flying whelk here at the bottom, though. Oh. And I think yeah, part of Kefka's the problem. Done. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just saying Kefka's done, so Christopher Walken's going to get that scissor, then go check that throne and be. Uh, heading up to the tower himself. Yeah, I think part of the problem with Ty is that uh, his Cyan keeps getting bullied every single time. That's probably why he hasn't yet uncursed the shield. Yeah, Cyan is a very good meat shield. Yeah, so it'll be a one hour and two minute go mode here for Questifer Warkin on the bottom half of the screen, plus skip. So he will head right into Kefka's tower uh, and will actually be basically where Fly Eagles Fly was a couple of minutes ago. But he started his seat a half an hour later. <laughs> he only has two dragons, but I, I, I don't know if I'd go for dragons at this point. Well, let's take a look at the ones that he's done. He's, already uh, he's done 40. the Mount Zozo one and the top of Narsh one. Remember, he's at 20 checks, though, so all of the enemies are level 50, right? Level 40 is great and all, but level 50 bosses are a big thing to overcome. And unfortunately for Ty, it's another dead check at Search the Sky, so Setzer's check's not paying out at all for him here. That's a bit unfortunate, as he's going to sink further and further behind. Do we know where uh, Christopher Warkin got those three extra espers from? He's just done a lot more checks than. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm just wondering which check specifically that. All right, uh, uh, Baron Falls Asmus. Imperial Camp. Uh, okay. Uh, where else? Burning, a lot of saving stuff. Burning, burning House. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, Try Talk Umaro. Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, no, Umaro is a, is a character, right? So not right. Umaro. Yep, Umaro was Gal. Ooh, 
Ooh, some enhancers here in the shop for Tybalt. Plus seven to your magic power for those. Those are a really good pickup for any magic user that you have. Cheddar Goblin, meanwhile, going up against his second statue boss here, Doom, after taking out the Dabbing Yeti. I wonder if Barkin is going to go for the dragons in the tower. If he's using Skip, he's not going. To, it's not going to work that way, though. That's correct. Right. I just wasn't sure if he was going to use the Skip or go in, clear the dragons, and then. go back. Alright, Magitech Factory it is for Tybalt. If he gets Esper, 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 he's also in go mode here after this check. And now it's the spicy chicken for Fly Eagles Fly. We hope he bought his blue cheese. And it looks like he has in the form of an offering Valiant Knife doing 7,000 a swing for a grand that total of 28,000 per turn. Actually that was glorious. <laughs> that was glorious. That's that's the kind of a, like damage you tell your grandchildren about. Phil Swift, that's a lot of damage. Meanwhile, also at the Guardian spot is Umaro in the other seed. That I is he... insane. <laughs> yeah, I guess the hiring agency just like only hires yetis. Yeah, and uh, Tybalt's finding some noodles there. Yeah, remember this was the fight that he reset out of very early on in the seed. Now has much more HP and can afford to come back here and start swinging at the grabby pasta. That doom goes down. Yeah, so that statue boss... Two apiece for our top runners. One more statue for each of them. Although I think Fly equals Fly has to... No. Cheddar must be done with all of his statues because that's the goddess one there. Yep, so one more for Fly equals Fly. And it's Doom here on this side. So Cheddar Goblin is actually going to be to Kefka first if he gets out of the menu here. And that is our dabbing Yeti down for Questifer Warkin. It feels like the both of the top runners are trying to just make sure that they got all ever like, you know, all their ducks in a row for these final fights. A lot of menuing going on. Oh, yep. Alright, so we Cheddar Gama is going into the Kefka fight now. Yep, so first person to the the Kefka fight here is uh, Cheddar Goblin. And, uh, so it's going to be like a little bit over the 137 time for him. And Fly Eagles Fly has one more boss to take down before he can get to the switches. Meanwhile, Questifer Warkin forgets the Mughal Charm there for his middle party. It looks like Tybalt is still having a bit of trouble with the noodles. Yeah, this grabby pasta, they can slow you down and it just makes the fight longer. That's what she said. Um, so I mean, I'm trying fun. to feel like that curse shield was cursed in more than one ways for Tibble. Yeah, it's very red cyan. You should probably get a skin checked. <laughs> He's blending in with his outfit there. Realm learning Ultima there, but not uncursing the shield. Still. The Exo misses the long arm, unfortunately, on Cheddar's side. And that is Shout for Tybalt there. So that's his seventh Esper. Let's try Exo again. And there it is, taking down the long arm. Now we want to take down the head, which is weak to fire. Because if we leave it for last, we death counter with Wake. And that is not okay, good. Okay, fire is the one element we get to use this uh, flag set. Yeah, it looks like Cheddar no. Goblin has copious amounts of elemental skeins for both Mog and Go-Go alike. 
Christopher Workin has Ultima online for Realm with a gem box economizer. Yeah, that'll make quick work of basically anything. Unfortunately, you do get opens for counterattack in between your two spell casts. So there you saw Realm bit the dust before casting that second Ultima there. So, oh, sets are barely hanging on. And that's Doom dead for Fly Eagles Fly. Only the balled up fist is left. And that fist is actually weak to water. So if uh, Cheddar Goblin throws some of his water edges, it'll do a lot of damage. But you know what else does a lot of damage? Bum Rush. Working, taking a reset there on the goddess fight. Yeah, that goddess was just not being friendly at all. Meanwhile, the martial adds here are a couple of Kefka Tower boss uh, enemies, rather, and they love to counterattack with some nasty things. This fight right here for Warkin is the only reason I could see going for the four dragons is to get that auto haste. Hmm. So Cheddar is uh, moving on to tier two, and uh, Eagles will be starting tier one shortly, I think. All right, thankfully, level five Doom and level four Flare is not taking out Ty's characters here. Meanwhile, Cheddar Goblin on tier two does have access to Mute, which will nullify magic. And we know we have Exone from picking out that cursed ring earlier on in the seed. Remember, folks, I said we never know if we're going to find Doom or not or instant death. So that single pickup is going to help him through this fight here. He does get that Mute off on magic, so that's going to be very helpful for Cheddar. Yeah, he could deal with two parts of the boss here. Hopefully he gets some good luck on the sex zone. That tiger is weak to ice, which we don't really have, except in the form of a blizzard sword that we could throw at it. It looks like that X zone did hit, uh, so tools should be down. Yeah, we're only seeing three numbers now, so I think the X zone hit tools. Goddess is down, so uh, Christopher Walken gets to proceed. And it looks like there is unfortunately a dead check uh, from Ty at the second part of the Magitek factory. So he's going to continue on with that guaranteed piece of progression at the end of the Magitek factory here. So this yeah. is going to be basically an arms race here between the jumps coming out from Edgar, the throw go and the bum rush for Cheddar Goblin versus Fly Eagles Fly with that Valiant Knife offering lock plus the accompanying damage from his other characters. So we'll see if Fly Eagles Fly has enough damage to cut into this lead here that Cheddar Goblin has thus far amassed. I mean, Cheddar Goblin is doing quite a bit of work on this, like, and does have a lot of the tools uh, he needs to, you know, make this easier on himself. Like, we saw the mute come out uh, we saw X Zone come out, so uh, like I think Cheddar's doing really well here. Yeah, I'm taking a look at the spells that uh, Fly Eagles Fly has. He does have access to Break, which will work for the long arm, but does not work for Tools in Phase Two. So slight advantage to Cheddar Goblin there. Again, that Curse Ring pickup very early in the seed, coming back in Spades here for Cheddar Goblin. Meanwhile, I think we have two more statues left for Questifer Warkin on the bottom, Doom and Poltergeist. Remember, it's the top runners are running against one another and the bottom runners are running against one another. Yeah, I think uh, in the case of the bottom runners, I think Tobolt just had a lot of tr early trouble. Uh, that was holding him back, and I think committing to that curse shield might not have been the way to go this time around, just because that sign was getting bodied left and right throughout the seed. Yeah, having the offering on the Ragnarok uh, is also something we should never ever do, so that's a, a good learning point to learn from here, because Celeste is basically neutering her damage, essentially. 
And also, it makes it so that Flare doesn't proc. That is also correct, yeah. So it's an overall net not benefit. As we do get rid of Larry right away, but Curly has a chance to revive Larry. Hopefully this Ultima will take down our top stooge there as Cheddar Goblin pulls through the 10 hits there and is on to tier number 3. Now, on the other hand, Offering is very good with Valiant Knife. Yeah, so that's what we'll see from Fly Eagles Fly. Locke's health is still super duper high. So we'll see if he gets bullied around a little bit here. Because this is the physical tier, after all. Okay, Cherry Goblin is on tier 3. Uh, we're going to see a uh, girl get taken out first to prevent any healing and resurrection. And then, uh, you know, the mad rush to get uh, sleep out. And then, hopefully, dodge calmness. Yeah, I don't know yeah. what we have for... Do we have Golem for Calmless Protection? It looks like Life 3 is going to be the Calmless Protection here for uh, Cheddar Goblin. And that is an Esper at the end of the match check factory. Thankfully for Tybalt, so he's back on the board here. He just needs one more. Uh, Fly Eagle's Fly is on Tier 2 now. Oh, look! We are using Sketch to end that fight early there for Ty. Nice heads-up play, knowing that it is Ultros 3 and saying... Be gone with you, Octopus. I want this Esper. We really, got really train. nice play there. Uh, train just came out for uh, twice now. I mean, it's good that we're not getting the Meteo, but Train is also annoying to deal with. All right, so here comes the Bum Rush, and this should send us into Calmness phase here. Yep, Calmness. Down goes Setzer, but he gets back up again. We're never going to keep him down. And there it is, yep. on to the final part. And that is another Esper for Ty in the Phantom Train. You can pick up the reward before you go through this check. So he will be in go mode as soon as he finishes the train here. Yeah, and luckily for Cheddar, there was only one calmness attack. Sometimes you can get two, and sometimes they can be on the same person. Yeah, Lightning can strike twice in the same place and worlds collide. And Ty is in the menagerie of ghosts here. He must not understand about why NPC remove. As he accidentally removes the ghost that he shouldn't. Uh-oh. Is that a soft lock? No, it should come back. If he goes back in, he has to go up and the ghost will come back. Oh, maybe not. That could... Yeah, that is something I've never actually seen before. So be careful when you're using YMPC remove. Of course, you know, after I just mentioned it. <laughs> uh, we do see Fallen One on Cheddar's side. Yep. Down comes Edgar from up on high. We do have yeah, tier he... three, so this will work uh, for getting the health back up there. And... Uh, we're going to keep going. Going to pour some damage into Kefka. Have to be careful for counterattacks under 30,000 HP and under 10,000 HP. He may counter with Ultima. So we'll see. Now comes the goner phase of Kefka as we're throwing out big beefy swords there. A couple of bum rushes and uh, I think this should do the trick. Yeah, this is not going to be long for the world. Double bum rush using that go go. And there it is, there Cheddar go. Goblin with the crack pal. 14738 is his official time. And that also means that uh, his uh, team, which is uh, team. Oh, God, I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> is going to even up their series at one game apiece. Yeah, it was very solid plays, and it just, you know, uh, he had the answers. He knew how to, uh, you know, write them down correctly. Team Flare Star, thank you. That's what it is. So GG's to Cheddar. And Tybalt is now getting through that uh, after learning the hard way about why we move. 
And it looks like Christopher Warkin had to reset out of the poltergeist the first time. Yeah, poltergeist at level 55 is no joke. Uh, Fly Eagles Fly is at tier 3, uh, so it's going to be dealing with Calmness shortly, and then on to Final Kefka. Yeah, that lock doing <laughs> ridiculous numbers there. 29,000 damage a turn, basically. Close to 30. And Warkin having a little trouble here at Poltergeist. He better be careful, because Ty will definitely catch up to him now that he has actually figured out the Phantom Train. <laughs> This is at the weapon. Yeah, so Ty just checked his uh, his uh, config menu, and he is at 20 checks after this one there. So he just has to do one more, and we'll get Kefka Tower skip. So one of the other things you can do to dodge calmness is just dodge it, which Locke just did. So sometimes that's also an effective strategy. Yeah, so make sure you tell Cheddar Goblin in his chat, GG. Although I think he just went offline, so I'm sorry for the delay on that. Should have definitely said that earlier. Meanwhile, it looks like Questifer Warkin heading back into Kefka's Tower here from the start. So they're going to have to get through the Inferno spot and then a full party onto the Poltergeist spot while Ty is going to be able to take on this dragon and then skip to the statue. So this race is a lot closer than it was about 10 minutes ago, folks. Looks like Christopher Warkin forgot about Moogle Charms, too. No thanks, I don't want that remedy. Please leave me alone. Fall in one coming out for Fly Eagles Fly, however. <laughs> this is where Locke gets the shine here as he's got that Valiant Knife offering. Okay, yeah, so Opera House Dragon for Tybalt. <laughs> Possibly trying for those four dragons. That is insane damage there. <laughs> that is oh, yeah, 33,000 well, I mean... damage out from Locke in that one turn. Kefka only has 60,000 HP health, by the way. Yeah, with, um, you know... Valiant Knife and Lock on 1 HP, that thing's going to be doing some work for him. He does also have uh, Life 3 from the previous fight, and this is going to end it right here. So after this, that'll be GG for Fly Eagles Fly 151.43. So get your GGs in chat for him as well. A pretty close race, all things considered. Make sure you tell him GG's in his chat as well. So now that the other race is over, folks, do we want to give this a try? <laughs> of switching back to the other... the other stuff. Let's do it. Let's do it yeah, here. We got dragons uh, being fought all over the place on the bottom, or the race that's still going on. But that looks pretty good. Yep, we just got to do a quick crop here. Uh, so please stand by as we figure this out. It's much easier said than done when you are changing menus here for cropping. All right, let's do uh, let's do this screen here. That looks good enough. There we go. Good as new, huh? Look at that. One thing that I really like about this event <laughs> is it seems like all of the runs 
are very close for finish times. All right, and we are joined by Cheddar Goblin, the winner of the Fly Eagles Fly Cheddar Goblin race. Congratulations on your victory. GG's to you. Yes, thank you. That was really fun. I think you did a fantastic job of navigating this seed. Buying that curse ring early on in the seed paid off with you getting to X zone a few parts of final Kefka and uh, getting uh, to just basically carve through the seed with uh, some of the great things that we had on offer between throw and go go and then getting bum rush at the very end to seal the deal. Tell us a little bit about your strategy for a poltergeist seed. Well, my main thing is that I always push the scaling up too fast. So I play a little conservatively. If a check doesn't seem worthwhile, I, I book it. Um, and then, I, I don't know. I mean, that's about it as far as that goes. I just got to make sure I'm ahead of scaling is really what I'm worried about mostly. I like to hit up the Coliseum early if I can to get those, um, like a random Aura Lance or, you know, the Dragoon set, basically. And it, and it was nice to get that Aura Lance early and put on Mog. I, I like that a lot. But other than that, gotta be honest, I don't have a strategy. Just don't get don't get overscaled. Yeah, so there is a, a pretty linear seed in the I think your guys' seed where uh, you had to get your character from Ebbets Rock after you got mm -hmm. Strago from uh, um, oh where the heck was Strago? I don't remember where Strago was, but it was. Uh, you know, a pretty linear seed from there. Uh, were you at all worried about finding characters when you were racking up Esper after Esper for a while, or did you know that the characters would eventually come? Uh, no, I was actually kind of worried because I felt like uh, my party was really only had one character carrying it for a long time. Um, you know, Mog with the throw. And uh, so, yeah, that was actually a concern for me for a lot of the speed. Um, I wasn't sure what kind of lock didn't seem to be providing any offense for me. And uh, go go, you know, he's great, but uh, you know, he's limited. And uh, Setzer, I don't feel like Setzer had any oomph till the end there, but I could have uh, been neglecting uh, Setzer's abilities. So I, I also had a hard time with money <laughs> mm. in the seed. Were uh, you uh, planning from the start to try and get go for a bum rush, or did that just sort of say? come up when you looked at what you had together and said, oh, I'm only a couple levels away from getting bum rush for Setzer. When I went down and killed Opera House Dragon and I got an experience egg, I went, okay, well, I'm killing more dragons until I can get bum rush. That was, that's what clinched it for me. If I hadn't uh, got that experience egg, I probably wouldn't have considered it or it would only have been like an afterthought. All right, so focusing back on this race at hand real fast, Tybalt, with his 21 checks, was able to skip right to the statues here, so he has to finish out this four-boss gauntlet. Meanwhile, Questifer Warkin, remember, warped out of the tower and is now walking back through it, taking out Guardian at the Inferno spot and taking on his fourth dragon here, so he will get that uh, combined auto-safe, auto-haste. That was something I don't think cheddar that you ended up doing was the uh the four dragons there um was that just a you felt like you were strong enough thing or didn't want to add some time to your run no i actually made an effort to get four dragons i don't know which ones did i kill i killed the two in the kefka's tower oh, that's killed... right you did the kefka's tower thing i for... i completely forgot about that yeah yes. i think i think you i think you got the, uh, and you did the full clear, the full clear up the middle yes that's right i'm sorry yeah, I didn't think that I could split my party in a strategic way. Um, it just, I don't know. The, sometimes those statues can really smack you down. Uh-oh, so it's Dirt Dragon Solo against the Raging Celeste. Who is going to win here? Cat Scratch Fever. We'll see if uh, Dirt Dragon comes down to that eight attack there. And there it goes. Um, so... Yeah, we'll bring in Fly Eagles Fly as well. So Fly Eagles Fly, congratulations on finishing out that seed. Your lock with that Valiant Knife that you found in the South Figaro basement and the offering doing a heck of a lot of work there towards the end of the seed. 
Yeah, I saw the Valiant Knife, and I was hoping to get a lock. And once I got him, I was like, I know where the offering's at. And I was like, going to use that the whole time, even though he was a natural magic. And uh, unfortunately, Cheddar, that also meant you missed out on the Valiant Knife and the Experience Egg down in the South Figaro basement. Was that something you were going to come back to at some point, or just you were just like, well, I'm a lot into my looting phase now. Let's just continue to go. Well, first off, I have to say I'm jealous. I would have loved a lock with VK offering. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I, I just, I looked at my time. I've been getting advice on looking at time for looting. And I was like, look, the time for looting is over. Um, let's keep going. I didn't even think about going back. Nice. Um, so, Joker Mage, do we have any other questions for uh, for Cheddar here? Uh, just for, regarding, like, um, the triads in general, like, uh, do you, have you been able to play all three of the flag sets? Yeah, I, uh, we had, like, what, the Battle Academy earlier, maybe the couple weeks before mm -hmm. we started up the competition, and, uh, I made sure I played almost every one of them, even if I didn't report my time because I didn't finish. And, uh, I have to say, um, the goddess, goddess of Zedict is pretty nasty. As far as uh, Doom and Poltergeist, so do you have uh, any preferences or anything that you do differently in one in versus the other? I feel like it's easier to go in Doom. I don't know why. I guess it just seems like the physical attackers are just a little more OP. And I don't know. I want to see Umaro. I want to. I want to get in a seed and see Umaro. <laughs> oh, hyperdrive! Yeah, I, I feel the same Thick. way. Yeah, so unfortunately in the race we've got on the screen here, Christopher Warkin having to warp out because of party compositional issues, and Tybalt taking a hyperdrive to the face against Goddess. Those level 50 statues, they don't play around, Jetter. <laughs> no, I don't like the stat. The statues are difficult, <laughs> much more difficult for me anyway with these seeds, but it makes it fun. Uh, any Steve. other... I'm sorry, go ahead, Joker. I was just going to say that uh, Tybalt validated the seed. That was a fire rod in the poltergeist chest. <laughs> of course. Uh, any other thoughts on uh, the race or the event in general, Cheddar? You know, I just honestly, I'm just grateful for everyone in this community that's helped me, you know, improve over the last couple months. It's a pretty great place to be, and I'm glad to be here. Yeah, so thank you so much for volunteering to be on Restream. We can't have the races without the runners, and we will certainly help work through some of your fun OBS things that we were trying to do before the stream uh, at another juncture. But again, thank you for volunteering and for uh, hopping in the booth with us to share your thoughts. Really appreciate that. Yeah, thank you all for, you know, letting me talk a little bit. Appreciate it. Congrats on evening it up for your team. The tiebreaker race will be later tonight at 11 p.m. Eastern. So starting in about 40 minutes or so, that should be a cool one to uh, to pay attention to. So thank you so much, and uh, we'll catch you later. Yep. Bye-bye. All right. Fly Eagles Fly, questions for you about the Poltergeist Fury flag set in general. Do you have a strategy that you tended to go to, and did you adhere to that in this race or not? Uh yeah, like, the one thing that I tried to hear to is uh, getting the four dragons done, so that way you get the auto haste, so that way my team's a little bit faster. But uh, mostly just go through, like, how I normally do, like, on, like, an Ultras League, just with the looting, but then having that uh, YMPC disappear really helps out to open up, uh, always going to Magic Tech Factory to get that done. Yeah, so we did see some sequence breaking a little bit along the way. Um, the curse shield count, and I forgot to ask this of Cheddar, but thankfully he's still in here, was 20. Uh, that was a bit too much, I think, for both of you. Am I right? I didn't yeah, want I, it. <laughs> I saw 20 and I was like, nope, not trying it. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the paladin shield is great. Learning ultimate is great. But 20 battles is an awful long time have one of your characters sort of be out of commission there so um so yeah fly eagles fly your strategy was uh let's use this lock with the valiant knife and let him carry me through basically a lot of the seed there 
Um, and you ended up getting the check skip for uh, for Kafka's tower. Was that something you set your eyes on when you saw the requirements, or did it just happen to fall into place when you were going through the seed? So it all depends on whether or not I go for it. Um, at the time, I knew I needed uh, to get either like one more character, uh, I mean, one more Esper to unlock Kefka Tower. And knowing that I was at like 21 checks at that time, I was like, I only need a couple more just to get the skip and that would help me out. But if I'm sitting at like 16, I've been doing on these uh, seeds, I'm just going straight to the tower and doing all three paths. Um, yeah, so we also had um, some statue woes, I think. You uh, you had a bit of a, a, of a trouble with one of the statues there in, uh, in Kefka's Tower. What is your, I guess, approach to these high-scaled statues at the end of the seed? Uh, mostly just like looking at my party and thinking along the way, like who can take what and the way Locke was in this seed, uh, I knew he could take the middle no matter what with, uh, both the, the statue and guardian, but, uh, trying to think like who could take everything on. I know Strago had Ultima from the Esper that he learned it from. So I'm like, he could do either right or left to try to help out and then when I did the um, check and got uh, Cyan and seen he had Shock, so I figured, all right, Gogo's got Mimic, Cyan's got Shock, at least that will do 3,000, 4,000 a turn, along with uh, Mog throwing, and he's like hit throwing really high with uh, damage, so thought that would ha help, but then started a little bit backfire and just left Mog by himself. Yeah. Also, not having access to instant death definitely slowed you down a little bit in your uh, in your Kefka climb. Although you did have Break and Raiden, so you did make do with what you had as well. So that was good heads up game knowledge from you there as well. Uh, Joker Mage, you got any questions of uh, of Fly Eagles Fly? Uh, in general, how do you feel about like the Poltergeist Five set compared to the yeah, other Triad Five sets? Uh, actually, I like the Poltergeist more than the other ones. Uh, the first one, when first this got rolled out, I did the Goddess, and I was like, oh yeah, that's not fun. Especially when you cast Life 3 and forgetting that they turn into zombies when they die, and then Life 3 cancels out. So, yeah, that was a little bit learning. Uh, Doom, it's basically just uh, keeping me in mind of, like, thinking it's like an ultras league race and just like going right with it but like favorite one poltergeist least favorite is the goddess one yeah that seems to be a recurring theme is it just because of the longer seed play or uh higher requirements or is it something to do with having defensive items as rewards what's 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 the story behind that uh, I think it's uh, mostly like deals with like the rewards that we get from uh, completing different things like in Poltergeist like I didn't go to the Coliseum this time around but in some seeds I go to the Coliseum first to get uh, someone to be a Dragoon so it's nice to have that on the Poltergeist seed and having that going through but then it's just trying to get used to which uh, having your uh counter on in goddess trying to get used to that but i kind of been playing around with um having uh condemned on my uh team so it's kind of getting me used to trying to use the weight trick with the counter on my team so it's just trying to get familiar with that and i think a lot of people aren't really familiar with it so that's why goddess could be a little bit of a trouble especially if for instance, you have Locke with a Valiant Knife, and he turns into a zombie and has that offer and starts going crazy on your party. So we do have uh, Tybalt is actually in the Kefka fight now. 
Yeah, it's unfortunate. Christopher Warkin, I think, mixed up his party. And when you're not used to having to climb through Kefka's Tower and assign a particular group to a particular slot, this is kind of the muscle memory of Kefka's Tower working against you, unfortunately. And it's resulting in a, a very significant time loss here. Yeah, I mean, th this is kind of why I just rely on that right-hand swing play that we've discussed before, where you just pack the right side, go through the ambush, then clear out everything else that you can with that full party in the right. Uh, Fly Eagles Fly, you got any other uh, final thoughts uh, before we let you go here? Uh, nothing really except for like, hey, the community is very nice helping out. Uh, like I've said before, just having a uh, couple veteran players help out while uh, trying to get used to different seeds and getting some different strategies to help out with these. It's pretty good. Uh, also, like this event having teams is really nice because I communicate with my teammates and we talk about different seeds that we do. And eventually we're going to be playing a couple seeds together to see which way we go as we're walking through these uh, different uh triads that we're doing nice i'm glad you're enjoying it and uh we hope to see you again in another week but uh, thank you for volunteering to be on restream can't have the races without the runners so really appreciate that and good luck with uh, the rest of the event here thank you and uh shout out to the commentators restreamers everybody doing the hard work to help uh show these online Appreciate it. Thank you very much. So, um, we see some interesting stuff happening from Tybalt, actually. He used uh, either Odin or Raiden to get rid of Longarm, and then also went ahead and used Golem. And uh, I think, you know, we have that multicast. You might as well use Golem more than once. Yeah, use it as many times as you want. Use it on Tier 1, which is mostly physical. Use it on Tier 2 to block the 10 hits. And then, of course... The star, the showstopper, the star of the show, Golem on Tier 3 for Calmness. Yeah, what makes this whole event really interesting for me are those little tweaks that you don't usually see, like the multicast espers and uh, things like that, where it's suddenly like what you're used to from like Ultras League and other more standard flag sets just is upended. Yeah, it really rewards, you know, deeper game knowledge uh, than than in the standard race flag set, which is really fun. We have a lot of non-standard uh, weekly synchronous races that do go on in our Discord. So if you're interested in doing more of these wacky flag sets, we do a weekly draft where we draft the flag sets and it's a different set of options each week. We have a living seed where the runners actually get to alter whatever flags they want. Well, one flag per week. And uh, we also have, you know, the Ultra League Underground. If you want to sort of turn your brain off a little bit and play, that is the same as our standard flag set. But it allows you to give you sort of a bar of where you are within uh, within the pantheon of how fast you should be going and will also allow you to improve your game by getting a lot of feedback in the spoiler room as to what strategies were being used by certain runners. And here's the mute coming out for, uh, for magic. Uh, we do have an air anchor there for tools, so that'll take care of tools. Very nice heads up uh, mixing of both espers and abilities here as Questifer Warkin finally gets back through Guardian a second time. Level 50 Guardian is no joke, and that is a really tough fight, especially with uh, with your B team there, because remember, he still has to fight a statue boss at the end of this Poltergeist in order to get up to final Kefka. I also think that on his reset, he lost a dragon. Okay. Looking at his yep. tracker, it only shows three. Yep, but... that is correct. Yeah, because he... He realized after this room that uh, he uh, unfortunately was in the wrong slot for the party to take on the statues. But I wonder if Tybalt knows that 
offering is not the right play with the Ragnarok or with the Illumina because it looks like he still has the offering on his Celeste with Ragnarok. Yeah, that'll certainly be a uh, teachable moment there. Uh, so to, to kind of explain the why behind it a little bit more, because uh, we kind of glossed over it. So the Ragnarok has a critical property where if you have MP, it will do double damage all the time. So it will always do twice as much damage and it has a chance to proc the flare spell. With the offering equipped, it does four attacks at half damage. So you're essentially, instead of doing twice the damage to one target, you're doing twice the damage spread out amongst four targets and you don't have that flare proc ability at the end of the swings of your Ragnarok. So it's always better to use Ragnarok with just fight unless you really don't have any MP, which is only the case really in the very beginning of a seed, right? So Ragnarok and Illumina is has that same critical property that I mentioned where it will, uh, it will always do double damage. And oh no, Forgot the Moogle charm, and Merton comes out and kills Strago! Oh, oh my that's... goodness, that is brutal. I, I think he just he lost Guardian saved. and the Dragon. Please again. tell me he saved. I don't know if there's a place he could have saved. He could have saved after Guardian. Yeah, so it looks like he saved after Guardian, checking the levels okay. of his characters. But that is the third time he's going to have to kill this dragon here. You hate to see it happen. So, as much as I would like to capitalize on Tybalt not realizing that about the offering in Ragnarok, since he is my opponent for next week, <laughs> it is a very good teachable moment because there was one seed I was doing. Um, I actually think it was my race from this week. Mm -hmm. um, I asked during the race if the weapons would proc with ultim or with offering and someone in chat said that you know unfortunately i can't respond the way i would like to because it is an official race right um but in the past scenes that i've done i remembered that ultima or the pearl or flare never proc when i had offering on mm -hmm. so using that past knowledge i just process of elimination assumed that it would not proc and left offering off of my big sword users. Yeah, so the offering is a great relic when you have a weapon that doesn't have sort of a damage negate, or rather, it's great with a weapon that doesn't do a lot with the damage penalty of having the four hits at half damage sort of uh, property of the offering. So, the first weapon that we already saw taken advantage by uh, Fly Eagle's Fly was the Valiant Knife. And that's because the Valiant Knife will get its damage cut in half for four times. However, it also has a damage multiplier added after that that's based on the amount of HP your character is missing. I think Fixed Dice is another good one. Yeah, so Fixed Dice's wow. damage is calculated based on the dice on the screen. And it is not affected by Offering. The, Does Atma Weapon get affected by Offering? So the Atma Weapon will also get the damage half by Offering, but it has another damage multiplier at the end that adds damage, well, actually it rather subtracts damage based on the amount of HP that you're missing, doing its maximum damage at full health. So it sort of negates part of the Offering. And then the other one that we tend to use is the Sniper, which does get the half damage penalty, but each swing of the sniper has a chance to proc for either one and a half times damage or three times damage if it's a floating target. So since the proc is every single swing, it makes up for that half damage penalty as we see Tybalt pushing through tier number three with that golem summon onto tier four here with his team. He does have life three, I think, on a bunch of his different characters. So he's got some insurance just in case Kefka decides to get a little bit rude here. But uh, we'll see how he goes with the final fight here. 
He seems to be doing pretty well, though. And I'm not sure where, what, like, all his uh, equipment or, like, sort of uh, damage dealing is. Is it mostly Ultima? I think it is Ultima. I think he's got Realm with Gembox, Economizer, Ultima combo. And we have Mog with Throw, and Cyan has Drill. Yeah, so I, it probably is Ultima going to be doing most of the work there, right? I would imagine so. And he's looking for a way to undo the train from uh, uh, sleep from last year. Falling one is coming out. And you know, Mega looks are very standard. Oh, Mog has Ultima too. Yeah, so he'll supplement with Ultima in between throw. Just gotta be careful for the Ultima counter. <laughs> Wait, does Mog have a gem box too? Uh, I think one of the dragon rewards in the tower was a gem box. Golem's coming out again. Yeah, so it looks like Mog has the gem box in Realm, it just doesn't. Okay. Who hyperdrive counter to Celeste, and it's time for Goner here. So now is the chance. Let's throw everything at the boss. So that is our double Ultima, actually triple Ultima in this case. And we'll see if that is enough damage to get through this fight. I well, think it Realm will was, be. Yeah, Realm was doing quad nines, and Bog was at least 9,000, I think. At that point, uh, he's got the Pearl Rod. I was going to say if. Oh, Mog's doing almost nine. And there it is, the Boom Shakalaka. 150.38 is uh, the time for Tybalt bringing it home for his team. That is the third win. So that is a sweep there for Team Doomgaze versus Team Atma. Get your GGs in chat for him. And we'll see if he wants to come in for an interview as well. And now it's the Poltergeist fight that stopped Questifer working in his tracks almost 45 minutes ago. And we are now joined by Tobolt. GG's. GG's. Yeah, so uh, tell us a little bit about uh, your strategy here with this Poltergeist flag set. Uh, you know, to be completely honest, uh, this is only the second Poltergeist seed I've ever played. So, <laughs> with that being said... Nice. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, the starting party was, you know, decently okay. I mean, usually I start off by going to, to Narsh to get the Curse Shield, to get that encounter start ticking down. Uh, however, the Curse Shield, Curse Shield happened to have a, uh, a magnet on it. And oh, yeah. I could not keep that person up. But having Numaro early game, it's it's something to check the Coliseum and, and the Coliseum having an offering and a Ragnarok. I was like, okay. <laughs> Especially when they're free fights. <laughs> yeah, so just the point of uh of uh help here. The offering and the Ragnarok, you shouldn't use them together. The Ragnarok already does with just the regular fight command, two times the damage. So you essentially get the same amount of damage as you would for offering, but you get to choose the one target it applies to, and it doesn't proc flare with the offering. So for next time, put the offering on another character and leave the Ragnarok by itself. 
Yeah, I forget. It's one of those things. I for, I forget if, if, like the Genji Glove or offering which one breaks. So I always forget that. Yeah, well, it's it's tough jostling uh, multiple randomizers at once here. So <laughs> I could certainly understand that particular yeah. confusion there. So, um, but yeah. yeah, so you ended up getting the Kafka Tower skip at twenty one checks. Uh, were you sort of relieved that you got to do skip? Uh, in this particular seed. I think that is what put you ahead of Christopher Warkin there as uh, he unfortunately had some mishaps inside of Kefka's tower. So you kind of I, leapfrogged over him there. I mean, uh, the whole, with me, I can never remember which section goes where. So for me, me, I'm generally always going to go skip. Therefore, I know which party is going to which statue area. Uh, that's something that I've just always done. It's like I always try and get Kefka... Uh, KT skip, mm -hmm. and I hate it when I don't. Uh, I just want to have to get it right at that last drag, and I'm like, cool, I don't have to go search for another check. <laughs> I felt really bad about that uh, Chad fight. Uh, I didn't save before doing that section, so it's like, I can't reset. <laughs> I would lose the Kefka Narsh fights and the fights in here. It felt so bad. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Yeti persevered, though, and that's what happens, I guess, when you put your trust in the Yeti sometimes, huh? Hey, you know, you can trust the Yeti for the early to halfway through the mid-game, and then he just kind of quickly decides to get his revenge on you at, in KT, you know? <laughs> oh, I, I love Yeti. If he's in my start party and I find an experience, I goes right on Yeti, and I keep him through the whole seed. Ugh. <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> Finding the mag to power espers later, later in the seed kind of hurt a little bit, but then finding realm with you know decently high magic, I'm like, okay, I've got a couple espers for the teach ultima. I'm I'm happy. Big blue button, always a big blue button. Didn't have to so, worry about MP because the encodemizers were everywhere. Right. <laughs> Out of the three Warring Triad flag sets, which one is your favorite? Which one is your least favorite? Um, uh, I haven't played either of the others yet. <laughs> I've been slacking in that, so I haven't tested out the other two flag sets yet. Okay. Now, um, um, little bit of information. I am your opponent for next week. Oh, lovely. Ooh, um, them's fighting oh. words. <laughs> And when when I saw that you kept offering on your Ragnarok user for the entirety of the seed, um, towards the end, I was questioning whether or not you knew that offering canceled out the bonuses from like Ragnarok and the Illumina. And as much as I would like to keep that information secret from you to give me a slight advantage next week, the right thing to do is to let you know. Yeah, and I would do the same thing, and, and, and vice versa, if I was going against you in free enterprise, you didn't know knowledge like that, I would tell you. Uh, just it's uh, make the playing field at least more even. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And that's that's what I love about the community. I am rather new to it, um, and just the even without doing signing up for the actual mentoring program, there are so many people that just jump in and give advice. And the Warring Triads has been great because my teammates, we have our own separate little thread and we share strategies with each other. And they've actually watched some of my previous runs and gave me feedback on those. And uh, if I was correct, I ended up did uh, accidentally soft locking myself in the train. Oh, right? yeah. <laughs> Yeah, did. I, I did not know that that would... See, you learn something new every time you play or watch a Worlds Collide race, right? I had no idea that that could happen. I even said, hey, if you ever accidentally YMPC remove something, just go out of the room and come back in and it's fine. Clearly that was not the case. <laughs> oh, you can do it there and I think you can do it with Sid in uh, Magic Factory. Kafkad Imperial Camp as well is another yep. one where it's no good, so... Yeah, thank you for uh, making that mistake so that we don't have to do that too. <laughs> that was the commentator's curse. 
Uh oh. Listen, Don't learning things in with. worlds collide the hard way is the only way that I learn. <laughs> hey, you know you gotta learn somehow. Sometimes it's a hard lesson to learn, but you learned it. Um, any other thing you want to uh, point out from your run besides the Phantom Train mishap that you thought was interesting, funny questions for us? No, I mean, the, the, it was the, pretty much the Chad fight and the fact that the Curse Shield happened to have a magnet oh. to where everything targeted that person constantly. Mm. I just could not keep him up. Quest for Warkin like is the recipient of a triple kill uh, <laughs> from... Magic, that has got to hurt. So in this situation here, I don't know if Magic is the only one that's left, but sometimes it's better to try and kill the things that are hurting you than get your party up, because at least that you can then somehow continue to uh, to move forward there. So um, I don't have any else. You'll, I'll definitely watch this back, and I always like listening to commentators uh, to give tips and tricks for next time, so I hope to learn a lot uh, in this particular race. So, yeah. So, thank you so much for volunteering to be on Restream. Can't have the races without the runners. So, appreciate it again, and congratulations to you uh, securing the sweep for your team Doomgaze against Team Atma here. And uh, good luck in uh, some of the following rounds here as we continue onwards. And uh, hopefully, we'll see you again soon. Yeah, 100% that, you know, thanks to you for, uh, you know, putting on the restream, you know, it's like, yeah, we may be racing, but you put it all together, you know, the restreamers and the trackers, the commentators, you're the ones that are actually putting it all together, we're just racing. Well, appreciate it, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Yeah, have a good one. Thanks. Bye. Alright, so Questifer Warkin here, unfortunately, is going to go down to just three characters, Losing the Cat Scratch, uh, Celeste, and the Body Slam and Umaro, but he does have his Ultima user still in tow, so there are still things that he can do here, especially with access to Golem on one of his characters that are left alive. Thank goodness. Yeah, so Hefe points out in chat another fun soft lock is why removing the Chupon Spray or the Hyden Sprite in Ebbets Rock. Not only do you soft lock yourself there, but you have to collect all that coral all over again because you have to walk out of that room and the treasure chest has eaten all 22 pieces of your coral. So that is that is not a fun one. That, no, uh, that sounds horrible. To, to go do. I think uh, Christopher Walken, Walken only uh, came into the tower with uh, five characters. That is correct. Ignore the cropping that's going on on screen. That's setting up for the next race. Yes, a third race of this triple header. I thought we were going to have some time in between these two races, but our other runners decided to make it interesting. So we are going to make it interesting. And there's the block from Calmness there. Strago scooting by. I think he will be the uh, the person that basically uh, just hooks up the team with some health here in uh, st the start of final Kefka. How much power does this team have, like in terms of offense, right now? I think Mog's the jumper, and then Realm is Ultima Economizer. So as long as there's nothing really surprising, he should have enough to get through this, right? Oh, he should. Oh, he first has to get that uh, train gunk off of uh, Realm before she can do anything. Correct. Got the fallen one, but yeah. Strago should be able to get a heal off. Yeah, Mog was already in the air, so dodge that, so that's helpful. Yeah, Quad Nine's off that Ultima. Mog's doing some decent damage. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think this is going to come down to, right, you're probably not going to kill him before Goner unless you get really lucky. So this will be about managing the second turn of counterattacks here. I think Rome and Mog both have enough health to survive Goner. I'm not sure about Strago. Well, is the Goner phase, is he at 30k? Uh, yes. Okay, here's Goner. Because otherwise he'll go, he'll cycle back to Fallen 1. Oh, it was close with Realm doing Quad 9s twice. I think he's just going for it. I mean, at this point, you just YOLO. There it is, yep. the YOLO! Yep. 150 38. Oh no, I'm sorry. That's Ty's time. Christopher Warkin is trying to dot done now, but did it in all caps by mistake. 204 40 is his time.